in a Catholic environment. And I, I have to hasten to add here that in those days, the early 50s, mid-50s, the early 60s, the Catholic Church was the, was what everybody's life more or less centered around. As for me, I had what I consider to be a, a privileged position in that there was a bishop in the house, Bishop Bowers, my mother's brother, who was the the um, the Bishop of Accra, Ghana. He came home from time to time, and it was a whole big celebration if people come in and so on and whatever else. The schools I attended, Maho. At that time, Maho School was above the cemetery, the Masak Cemetery. It's still the, the building is still there. And then I went to Clifton. Clifton was back then in the dark ages, no electricity, no nothing. We had to travel to Clifton by boat, as a matter of fact. But I lived with Isaiah Thomas and his wife, um, Mistress Thomas, who were a teaching team. He, was, he usually got transferred to a school. He was the headmaster and she was his assistant. From Clifton to Marigot, from Marigot government scholarship to grammar school, from grammar school into the military. Um, that is what I wanted, that is what I chose. The, as a matter of fact, I was still that young that in 1968, I was 17, my mother had to sign for me to become a volunteer defense forcer because I wasn't yet 18 years old. But she knew that's what I wanted, and so she, she, she signed the documents for me. Um, when we talk about our laku, for many of us growing up in Maho, our laku was the road, and still is to a certain extent. But many, many years, many, many years into my life, it was Raven Blackmore who, in a discussion we were having, pointed out that the road is a very powerful institution. And so, in my bringing up days, it was the road. Mommy, I going down the road. And on the road was everything you wanted. To learn to fish, to do or to not do, to be or to not be, it happened on the road. There, there, were, there were sections of the road that we couldn't venture into when, while we were still small. And of course, there was the, the, the larger cool wash, which I always enjoyed up to now, if we ever had larger cool wash. Larger cool wash is it, my brother? You know, so the road was my laku. And, you know, it, it did me well. It trained me, it taught me things, helped me. I mean, there, I mean, there were times when we would play a whole cricket match on the road. No vehicles passing up and down. They would, I mean, we would just, we would just spend hours and hours. And when the day goes by and there's moonlight, we're on the road. So that was my look, laku. So, in a sense, I can say that the, the road which was your laku prepared you for the army, according to you, larger cool wash. And that would be one side against the other. Yes, and, and, and you know, and, and flinging stones. But, but, then, but then also, I don't know, the, the stone has a special place, I believe, where my old fellows are concerned. 
because on visiting Mr. Nassif's coconut foundation fields, if you couldn't pick coconut with stone, forget it, bro. You wouldn't, drink, you wouldn't get to eat or drink a coconut. And I mean, I saw fellas, when they land a stone on a, on a guap, the whole guap going up in the air and they go two or three. That's how strong guys were. That's right. No, you, you said that in your family, um, you raised as a Catholic. And yes. Your uncle, your mother's brother, yeah. um, was a, a bishop. Yeah. Whenever he would come to Dominica, that it was like celebration. At yes. Uh, tell me how did that really help your faith um, while growing up in the Catholic Church in Maho? Well, frankly, I got to see a side of life that surprised me because the Catholic Church was the helper that we got involved in distributing. There was something called the Social League of Catholic Women, SLCW, my, my aunts, my mom, and their, their contemporaries. They got from the nuns every week milk and flour and corn flour and bulga and cheese and butter oil to distribute to the people, the poorer people in the community. It was also the Catholic Church that had established the young Christian workers, the YCW. And they were instrumental in building what we now call the Maho Parish Hall. I, I worked as a little boy there. They were making blocks and everything to build it up. But the people, bro, people, I don't know if the people, people cheat. Because what, what, what happened? My uncle decided to leave Dominica and retire back to Accra, Ghana. Because people were working on him. People were fooling him. I mean, there's one young lady who came up to our house, and he, with his phenomenal memory, asked her, well, what about the baby? And she asked her, well, Bishop, which baby are you talking about? But she had previously come with a baby a week or so, a week or so before to get from him some assistance for the baby, or presumably for the baby. And when he remembers and asks her, what about the baby? She asks him, which baby are you talking about? She don't have a baby. But then I, I departed from the Catholic Church. I am... But, but, but before you departed from the Catholic Church, I, I want to know a little bit of um, your uncle and yourself in talking about Africa. I'm sure even as a bishop that he would have spoken to you about the struggles in Africa, he would have spoken to you about the consciousness of the African people, especially knowing that the Caribbean was becoming conscious about their blackness. Yes, but he, his, his area was more of assisting. So he would talk about the sisters, the sisters. They, they, they got into, into making cloth, printing, they got into caring for the sick. He, he, he was able to tap into many, many factors who gave him money for his projects. I believe he would have done something in Dominica, but then the people kind of turned him off. He was that kind of person. So, so in Africa, he was more, in, although there was one, there was one um, episode in his life when there was a coup and the military and the government met to thresh it out. And behold, here he was in the middle of the action, 
center of the photo having got the various factions to settle the thing amicably but he was more into assisting people taking care of the poor and building up human beings no while at the dominica gamma school because you said from marigot you sat an exam you got a scholarship and you went to secondary school the dominica gamma school give us the life that you lived while you were the first um the 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 initial experience was confusing you you accustomed to have face-to-face -face learning and then suddenly you find yourself with a textbook having to study for yourself go home do your work is a totally different discipline back then from the primary school experience where people grind you and they grill you and they train you to pass your exams when you go to grammar school, bro, you have to you have to fit in on your own. Now there is no time for any in school assistance because you have to find yourself in Maho, mm -hmm. and you have chores to do. And that was another aspect of our lives. For a while, our lives in the community revolved around doing our chores. Go and get your wood. Go and tie the goat. Go and bring the goat inside. Go and get grass for the rabbits. So in the early stages, the grammar school was confusing. But, but even while it was confusing, um, the process of learning, uh, as you said, was totally different. Yes. Um, tell, me, tell me what would have caused you, while you are in the Dominican grammar school, would have caused you to decide that you want to go to the military? That was it for me. For me... That was the life. You know, you know, when you listen to the, the national anthem, come you forward, sons and daughters. Because, because living in the community, growing up in the community, it, it, one bonded with Dominica, catching crabs, One bonded with Dominica, learning that a, a, a frog wouldn't boil in the pot, will keep on jumping in the pot until you remove every last vein. Catching crabs, as I probably said a while ago. You know, doing those things, going out and fish, going to the rivers. And discovering Dominica. And I wanted to be part of that. That is what I wanted. I didn't want anything more. I didn't want to go and be uh, anything more than that. And as I said, I went in at 17. And mommy signed for me. So, But before, but before you, you, you decided that you were going to go into into the military. I am sure that you would have spoken to some of your friends while at the Dominica Grammar School about um, going to the army. What was... what? what no, you no, I, I didn't. Because frankly, my life at grammar school was at 3.20, the, the classes stopped at 3.20 in the afternoon. It was find my way to Maho. That was it. There, there wasn't any friends. I mean, I can probably talk about Edgar Robinson and so on, but... There wasn't any friends and friendship because we just had to make sure. I mean, if you if you miss the truck, there were only two trucks going down. If you miss the truck, you got to walk home. If you got a detention, you got to walk home. After detention, I would be I would be walking from post to post and run from the other post to the next post to get home in time to do my chores and from, don't get my tail messed up again. From Rosso to from Rosso to to Maho. Yes. But read, but um, um, question there. Uh, you, you are at, at DGS, and the, the DGS has had that history and tradition um, throughout the years of, of persons um, having to, uh, from, from third form, 
you are enrolled as a member of the cadet corps without without question yes i was so so um what Cecil was trying to find out was what 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 was it that that attracted you to the military no so so question to you as you know my my connection to the cadets were you a cadet yes exactly but i i served on the on the on the johnson exactly. um um not earl with Johnson, Julian. Julian, yeah. Okay, so tell us, tell us, tell us your experience, um, uh, because now you, we probably glossed over your your school, the, the the academic side, but because you you had that 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 focus on the military, what was your experience of joining or being a member of the Cadet Corps? Did you have any? It wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't a very good experience. <laughs> but tell me, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. But you you would you were volunteered into it or you has had to be a cadet? Or, or, or it has had to be right. So so what was it that because for me it was it was enjoyable. You know I I, I, I rose all the way to the to, to commandant. But for you what happened or did not happen um, as a, as a member of the corps? I I couldn't I couldn't keep up with it. Why? Because as I said, I have to go home. Okay. Mm -hmm. I I must go home, bro. No, yeah, but and yeah. and I remember. Also, people like me had to do exercises yeah. in my short pant and my white shirt. Mm -hmm. And your hose? <laughs> but I didn't have I didn't have free shirts. Okay. I couldn't afford to do the shirt. Okay. Do you understand? But still, sometimes we met on Wednesdays. I have to be back at home. To do my chores, as I say, a lot of life revolved around chores. Yeah, but you're in grammar school. You're a member of the school. You're a member of the cadets, and that is that. Whatever you do is part of the whole school structure. Yeah. And and you you, you mentioned that the, your experience wasn't good. So so it could have been that that experience would have detracted you from being in the military. Yet you no, somehow you were able to gravitate to it. No man. If I if I if I if there was one thing. Uh, that would have caused me to migrate. It would be to get into a military service outside. Yeah, but but you still have the. Um, explain. You are in grammar school. Mm -hmm. You are a cadet. Um, your your experience on on the Julian. Julian was a tough guy. Who who were who were your, your other other um, compatriots in the corps at the time? I remember. I remember Kenny Ali and I remember um, Burton Burton and Company. Right, right. I remember those 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 people. Right. But I wasn't focused on that. That wasn't for me. That just wasn't it. I just, I just, I, I was distracted. <laughs> there was too much distraction. There was things I have to do, and you know, like, like if I, if I, like when I did the the, the, the defense force, I know I go up on Friday, and if I do get through on time on Friday, I will sleep at our headquarters. But. It put pressure on my schoolwork being in the in the, in the cadet corps, and also it put pressure on me, on me, on my homework. But I mean, surely, okay, okay, okay. Here's another side. Give me, give us one nice thing and one bad thing that you can recall as a cadet. A nice thing about the about the um, well, again, here here, here comes the problem, yeah, because I watch I watch people get in uniforms. <laughs> And I not get in uniform. There we go. <laughs> I not get in uniform because the school I guess couldn't afford. But what rank were you then? Private. Well, exactly. So you're private. Come on, man. <laughs> you know, I watching guys with their with their stuff, and I, I like. Oh, I mean, what what's that? Okay. You know. So that's a bad thing or a good thing? Well, for me, I didn't care. <laughs> Read <you> something. <laughs> I really didn't care. It didn't matter to me what it was. I just realized that. This thing, I like it. I want to be part of it, but I do, I cannot. I don't have the currency. I haven't got the time. I haven't got anything. I just cannot be part of it. Okay. But did you ever get caned or anything like that for for not coming to to parade or anything? Well, of course, yeah. I got canes. I got canes. <laughs> I mean, I got canes like nobody business in grammar school. <laughs> what are you talking about, man? All right, all right. So, so you you are you are in grammar school. You you graduated. What 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 form did you graduate from? Um, at grammar school fifth fifth form and then you move straight away into the military straight into the military although mm. it was voluntary oh, voluntary yes indeed so I worked I taught school 
I worked with Astofans. I worked with the Social Security, well, well, NPF. During the transition to Social Security, I worked with them. And then I went full-time into the military. Okay. So is there anything that you want to talk to him about those lines? Because I, I will explain the DDF well, what, part what, of it. What I'm going to do, I'm just going to pause for a just cause. As we know that um, this program tonight is brought to you for the kind compliments of uh, Max Roy Trading. So let's take a word from our sponsors and then we come back to speak uh, to Commander, Captain, Captain, Chief Commander, Captain um, Malcolm Reed. Max Roy Trading got you covered for lumber, electrical, plumbing, and rear power to and all your household needs. 23 years in serving Dominica. Max Roy Trading, your foundation to building success. Come see us at the Fun Color Industrial Estate for all your building needs. Great customer service, convenient packet, delivery service, and best deals. Opening hours from 7.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. weekdays and 7.30 a.m. to 2 p.m. on Saturdays. Contact us on 449-9465 and order on WhatsApp on 225-8230. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Email Max Troy at cwdom.dm. Max Troy Trading got you covered for lumber, electrical, plumbing, and power to and all your household needs. You should know this by now. DBS got the number one sounds. There is no other. Oh no, not in this world. Yeah, man. This is Glenn Washington. DBS at the bars. See? Well, DBS, and we have tonight with us Malcolm Reed, Captain Malcolm Reed. Um, and now we go to the other segment um, with Captain Malcolm Reed. Now, you have moved into the barracks, if I can say, um, of that of the Dominica Defense Force. A young man, um, I own the military. Uh, tell us, as, as, as um, persons who are interested in the whole process, of why you went into it. Tell us the process of training. When you first entered, what was the process of training? But Cecil, even before we get into that, um, the training part, um, I think the, the, the public needs to understand the, the, the whole defense force thing um, in that Malcolm mentioned to us that he uh, enrolled as a, as a volunteer. So mm -hmm. just, ju just from the information I have in terms of documentation, it reads that the, 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 uh, the defense force um, first was organized as a voluntary defense force and they were embodied from August 1974 onwards and then they were made regular in January 1977. So when Reed got in, he was, he was a member of the volunteer defense force and, and there's a structure for that. Now, I've heard you mention um, or referring to him as Commander-in-Chief, but just for the, the benefit of those who are interested in that kind of structure, um, I don't know. I have the information. Captain Reed is here. He may want to explain the the, 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 the structure, or he may ask me to uh, do just that. So let's. let's yeah, go, you go ahead. You go ahead. What, you I, was ahead. Saying, what yeah. I was saying is, yeah. I wanted to to deal with the issue of he just came in, yeah. and then when we look at the structure that he would have been in, um, in terms of his promotion, that he could maybe. Well, the promotion uh, is not there yet. It's just the structure yet. It's, oh, because okay. he's he's, oh, okay. he's he's still voluntary. Okay, which is different. He's a, he's a private. Yeah. All different. right. So yeah. the, the structure of the of the military, which we are in, which we inherited, mm -hmm. and I'm I am I'm speaking that way from my own interaction with the military. Uh, for those persons who know me, they refer to me as a major, so they expect me to have some idea as to that kind of thing. So I'll be talking to read along those lines. And we'll be we'll be making reference to terms that are military terms for some persons who understand, some people who may not understand. So we'll try to clarify for everybody's um, understanding. The, the military structure we inherited from the from the British. Um, you you enter or you en you enlist as a private, then your 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 promotion goes to lance corporal, then you go to corporal. Then you go to sergeant. Sergeant what, what, has what's, what's the difference between lance corporal and corporal? Well, it's just it's just it's just responsibilities. And, and and rank. This, well, I mean, it's just like a, a, a it's just a, like a, pro, a progression, Cecil. Um, from from a baby, you go through your your ad, 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 your um, ad, ad, adolescence. You become an adult. You know that kind of structure. So in the military, a lance corporal, a lance corporal with one stripe, a corporal with yes. two stripes. Well in, well, in terms of insignia, that's a different thing. So a, a private has no 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 insignia. A lance corporal has one stripe. A corporal has two stripes. 
So, so when you see somebody from a distance, you can identify them by their insignia, all right? Uh, and again, just to again to reference, the, 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 uh, the, the Americans have a slightly different rank structure insignia just to be Americans, just to be different. But we're talking the British system. Okay, so we have private, lance corporal, corporal, we have a sergeant, and that, in that, that rank you have different levels of sergeant. You have WO1, WO2, warrant officer, one warrant officer, two, just to break the structure. But those who understand that. Then you have the CSM, the company sergeant major. Then you have the lieutenant or, or lieutenant. Some people say lieutenant. Again, the British will say lieutenant. I say lieutenant. Captain. Then you have the major. Then you have the left, left, lieutenant colonel. Then you have the colonel. You have a general. So that kind of structure. So when you mention um, commander-in-chief, the commander-in-chief is overall over all these people. And in our case, the commander-in-chief at the time of the, the DDF would have been the prime minister. He has overall control. So that's of, why he was called colonel. Well, no, no, his rank is colonel. His rank is colonel. His rank is colonel. But then, like I said, his, his position, he is responsible so sometimes in the military, and, 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 and Captain Reed will, will, um, will reference that, you go into, into battle, into, into whatever, and something happens, and you can see you're following orders, because everybody from, from the private up the rank, the private is the nicest guy in, 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 in the military. He has got no responsibility. You tell him to the left, to the right, sit down, that's, that's no business. He'll tell you following orders, but that same following orders can be att attributed to all members of the rank. And when we when we come to Captain Reed and May 29th, that he may or may choose that rank as that 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 that, that line as well. But we'll see what happens then. So just 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 a clarification. So like I said, in 70, 74 it was uh, voluntary force. In seventy seven it was regular. Um, so Reed would have moved in at, at the time, and um, on the regular force, the Again, there's also another, another structure to do with the strength. The number of persons in the structure. You have, you have um, just for that again, you have, uh, what we have now? We have a um, company, let's see, what we got? We got a, we got, we got a, a platoon. A platoon, um, Captain Reed, do you want me to go, go through that or not? Yeah, you can go ahead. Okay, I have to always defer to the captain, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> And by the way, I'm Cecil, on the military side, it's quite interesting, as, as I'm saying that. The military has, has, a, has, has a tradition that if you go into, a, the, let's say, the, 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 um, the canteen where drinks are being served or whatever else, and you address an officer by the wrong rank, right, you know, in trouble. So in other words, as you mentioned, uh, Commander-in-Chief, if you were a, an, an, an enlisted person in uniform, you go into the canteen and Captain Reed is at the canteen and you refer to him as commander in chief then all the drinks in there you paid for it yep you better believe that <laughs> so so just to reference you yep. when you mention you pay for it or we take it off your salary <laughs> you yeah. also, just know that so when you bench when you refer to cap to commander in chief well, well from now i'll be saying captain you, Reed. you better believe so nobody will take my salary <laughs> <laughs> just on that. Yeah. Yes, yeah, a serious thing. Yeah, I, was, I was really the, the two I see, the second in command. Indeed, indeed. Yeah. So, so we have, we have um, the, the platoon, which is about 20 to 50 persons, uh, a man. The company, which is about 100 to 250 persons. Um, the, uh, you have, so you have platoon, company, battalion, brigade, division, corps, regiment. These are the various sizes of, 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 um, of, 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 of persons. That would form that 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 um, particular mm -hmm. unit, yeah. and and depending on the on the size of the unit, it is the, the recommendations the recommendations for command is also listed as well. So for for uh, mm -hmm. a, a platoon, um, you would probably be commanded by by a lieutenant. For a company, a captain or the major, for, and then you go to, you go into the battalion and the brigade and yeah, that kind of stuff. That's right. So that kind of structure. So persons who are that way inclined will will be able to to um, appreciate. The, the, the situation with, with Captain Reed. And when we get to to the Defence Force structure to do with, with, with the Major, um, you will see where his position um, stood at that at the point in time. But Cecil, as we go into into the DDF, I had a, a, a slight a, a, a chat with um, Captain Reed, and I thought we would look at the the, the, the position of the of the de Defence Force at the time to do with the the um, the seventies, the uprisings of the seventies, the the dreads and all that stuff. Before we go into May, May 29, that's a whole different kettle of fish. So I don't know if you... But, but, but as I said, I, I, I wanted Captain Reed to really give me an explanation. Yeah, so we are, we are in there In reference now. to 
he as a as a private well, he, we're there now. yes so so Cap captain reed you can help us in 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 giving us um your your relationship um within the different force as a as private, a private yeah. and okay the ranks. And up the ranks. okay all right um from my and this is where it gets it gets ticklish from my entry into the military service in Dominica. My training was coordinated by uh, 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 something referred to as SNOWY. SNOWY, the acronym for Senior Naval Office West Indies. And that is where the technical thing comes in because that was the British Foreign Office coordinating training for the colonies and the, how they called us then, that we were associates still, we were not yet independent. So our training fell under the British government as it was said that the british was responsible for our defense yes and we were responsible for our economy yes okay so you apart from the drills and the field craft that we could do here in dominica the more specialized treatment, this more specialized training came under the British Foreign Office. I, I don't know that I can I can put it any clearer than that. But then Snowy, I don't know if Snowy still exists. I don't know. I just know that whenever I got on a on one of the battleships to go out there and land somewhere for training, I had to indemnify. That is to say, I had to sign in the minification that Dominica government not responsible for me and that the British government don't know me either. <laughs> wow. Okay, so, so well, um, I get that, um, Captain Reed, but the, the, just a little back a little bit um, to, for set to, and to get to Cecil's uh, point, I have here the information on you it says that uh captain um mr reed was you you were, you were enlisted in 1967 you appointed lance corporal in um on august 1971 um and they, they you were embodied in 1971 1972 and 1973 and you are appointed under officer that is before lieutenant um yeah i jumped on, i jumped i jumped a few rounds right appointed under officer in 1974 and you were commissioned Second Lieutenant on the 15th of September 1974. Commission right. means that it's an official rank that you can carry through. All right? And, yeah. and then um, you were promoted to, to Lieutenant in 1976. That is his, his rise. His structure from Lance Corporal, are you asking? Private to 1976. He was um, then appointed Lieutenant. And then in 1979, I think it was, that um, you uh, when. Um, Major uh, Hamlet retired, you would then move up to captain. So that's the I, I want him to explain to us yeah. in reference to the indemnity that he spoke about. Yeah, sure. I kind of bit confused about yeah, yeah, that. Well, yeah, yeah. That you are going to assist in training, or you're going to get assistance from the, from the British yeah. in reference to training. Yes. Yeah. And uh, the British would say to you that you had no. <laughs> no status. No status if them. Well, that's, a, that's a major I, thing, yes, sir. I'm, I'm kind of, I'm kind of lost. <laughs> that no, no status, bro. Period. No status at all. No. So, so if if I died, nobody could come around and sue the British government. Neither could anybody sue the Dominica government. This nature of the training. That is the again, again. If you observe that uh, after corporal, I shot up. I mean, I I skipped a couple of ranks. So, in reference to your training, um, where would you have gone for training? Dominica, out of Dominica, in the region? 
in, in Britain? Let, let's put it this way. In the region, mostly. Um, Dominica, of course, because because we have we have very good jungle. But then let's let's just put it this way that that I I trained with reps from the JDF, Jamaica Defense Force, the Guyana Defense Force, the Antigua Defense Force, the Saint Kitts, the KDF, the MDF, the Montserrat Defense Force. I trained with a whole lot of you know the 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 Royal Irish Highlanders, the Rangers, the you know, if I continue, it will sound like a fantasy. But but when the British responsible for your training, and you you appear to be one of their darlings, then they will they will they will they will include you. And so the Royal Engineers and so on. Yeah, man, yeah, man. it was it was <laughs> it was a whole and kit and where, where would you have like the best in terms of training? Well, it depends on the nature of the training. It depends on the nature of the training. For example, I mean, what you want to be in, in Guyana bush for? Scorpions. Poisonous snakes. You have out there um, um, pirates. Gold smugglers, mineral smugglers, who were who were former army men and real jungle fellas. What do you want to be on the guy in a Suriname border for? You know? That so that would have been a tedious training in, in that aspect in terms of Guyana. Yeah. What you want to be what you want to be in a in a you know, you know those those ant hills, those big ant hills they have in Guyana. What you want to be there for? And the people pouring sugar on you. Where, where where would have been in Dominica? Where would have been your favorite spot for training? Dominica, yeah. the whole the whole country. The whole country. The whole the whole the entire Dominica. That that you know the entire Dominica because because, you know I spoke earlier about about bonding and, and and that is part of the part of the patriotism bonding with this country my friend i mean i would have i would have willingly died for dominica anytime bro not for a man but for dominica i would have died anytime i would have died anytime for dominica because this is a place that the more you see of it the more you love it Okay, so um, so Reed, we are we are trying to maybe redirect um, tonight's discussion um, is is taking you out of the entire uh, defense force structure and focusing on and you as an individual, Captain Reed, in all of where we're going to go from here on. So um, <coughs> I have I have with me a copy of of a report. Um, it's called the Martindale Report. Mm -hmm. That um, that's August nineteen seventy eight that um, is an inquiry into the defense force at the time. And um, just to give the, the public an, an, an idea as to what the defense force is all about, why the defense force. And um, it, it says there that the, the defense force at the time, 1978, consisted of 85 ranks. So again, I'm, I'm referring to the fact that it was below company strength, which would have been 100 to, to, to 250 soldiers um, as, as a company. Um, and that included Women Auxiliary Corps, we call it WAX. There were nine females at the time in 1978. Mm -hmm. Now, the Defense Force. The role of the Defense Force, I think people need to understand, because those people, like, like, even like the police or even the, um, the fire or whatever, people don't understand what your role is, and they either give you a role or take away from your role what you saw your role supposed to be. Mm -hmm. And that, will, that, I think, will set the base for where you how you you reacted what what you did going forward as a soldier okay it says the role the role of a ddf is to one 
maintain the integrity of the boundaries of Dominica. I'm pausing so people can understand and that's sinking. Again, I repeat. One, maintain the integrity of the boundaries of Dominica. Two, to assist the Royal Dominica Police Force, RDPF, in the maintenance of law and order during a civil disturbance. I want to repeat that. Two, to assist the Royal Dominica Police Force in the maintenance of law and order during a civil disturbance. Three, to assist in bringing relief to the populace in time of national disaster. And four, to assist in the development of Dominica by productive means. That was what the Dominica Defense Force was, it was constituted and, 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 um, and embodied for. Um, and in that, in that structure, you have a defense, Dominica Defense Board, and then you have the, 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 the command structure that, that um, started off with the commanding officer, the CEO, who was then a Major J.N. Hamlet. He served both as commanding officer and chief of staff at the time. And then you have the other um, officers that would go from, um, well, the major at the time, then you went to the captain, and then you had the lieutenants, and you had the sergeants, and all that stuff. So that was the, I just wanted to clear it up so everybody understands mm. what the defense was all about. So when, when, when Mr. Reed, when, when Walter Reed enrolled, he enrolled under that umbrella. So... Now, I heard you mention um, that you would give your life for Dominica at any time. That is an is, is area where we need to be looking at. So before we go into May 29th, we have to be talking about the, uh, the DDF involvement with the police um, in terms of um, joint exercises and training, uh, and mainly around the, the time of the, the, the 70s, where it was a troubling time, and we know that the DDF police personnel were involved in a number of, of activities and a number of sorties out there in the hills. You want to tell us, tell us about this? And I mean, based on what I just said, um, um, Reed, how were you aware of that at the time when you, that you enrolled? I was aware of that, yes. Okay. Because, because I mean, during our various training lectures, we, we, we got to be told to certain things. Right. All right, uh, but but the I have to make the point again that we, as you as you probably read there, we operated under the auspices of the police force. Right. That's seventy-eight. Yeah. Well, I mean, I have other information that uh, because that what what you just said is going to be critical and instrumental in as it relates to May 1979. But my, the information I have here makes reference to <coughs> after our independence in, and that of in, after 78, the whole structure seemed to have changed where the, 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 the Defense Force had that autonomous way of operating. Well, well not, not formally, no? Well, not formally. Well, it, it, I, I not, not formally. I'll, okay, I'll find the area that, that makes reference to that. But yeah. You know, and so we we worked with the police mm -hmm. in those in those areas. Mm -hmm. um, who who who? Some folks might be able to remember the rough days, the action in the hills. You know, people <laughs> people dying. People are afraid to go to their plantations, and etc. But always, our our we worked in in conjunction with the police. As a matter of fact, some of the training that we went on overseas, but we were accompanied by the police. You know. Yeah, but the, the point I was just trying to make, Reed, was that um, given what was written in black and white as to the role of the DDF, and more so uh, number two. It says, to assist the Royal Dominica Police Force in the maintenance of law and order during a civil disturbance. Yes. Now, now the, it means that the, the, the command, and if you, again, um, refer to that, it means that the, the chief of police would have been your commander-in-chief. Is that what you're saying? 
the, 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 the defense counsel mm. handled those matters. But, but the police always had the upper hand because they were already organized. No, it's nothing to do with organization. All I'm just saying, the structure, as you know, for a military man, the structure is that whoever, who, who would you have considered to be your, 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 your chief of staff then? The police commissioner. Exactly. So that's what I'm saying. So, but then if you if you refer to the number two, it says assist the Royal Dominican Police Force in the maintenance of law and order during a civil disturbance. Yet you are being asked to go out there to help the assist the police in his duties. In the hills, which was not maybe not even part of your your job. How, how do you see that? Oh, I see. I see what you mean. See, no, that was that was that was that was part of our functions. Yeah. But you didn't say so. I mean, but no, he didn't say that. No. Yeah, exactly. So if I mean, in other words, you could have decided I I'm not doing that because it, that's not it's not it's not in my in my. It's not in our purview. But, but then, but then, even even in what you what you read in here now, mm. how much how much empowerment did we have? Well, I don't know. I'm no, asking. look at look at the borders. Mm. Look at the borders. How, how do we? How do we? How do we enforce border control? No, but as a soldier, without 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 a a, 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 a marine wing. No, but as a soldier, Reed, I mean, you're just following orders. That's that's for the authorities to do. That's that's, that's their, right. That's the problem. That's right. So if they give you a job to do, they have to give you tools to do the job. That's anyway. right. Well, that's you understand right. perfectly. But of course, of course. <laughs> So a lot of a lot of you know, and those reports and those reports and those commissions of inquiry, yes. many of them was just pure crap, well, you we, know. We talk about that, but by the way, mm. by the way, just for everybody's understanding, mm. when I spoke to you um, earlier, um, mm. just so we are clear that you had you had you had never seen that report, have you? No. Exactly. So we are clear. So when when I make reference to the report, people understand that I'm really saying that he has never read the report, but it is there. And no, it, and it, have not seen the report. And I have not seen the report. And it makes it makes a lot of reference to him, which I will kind of um, uh, ask him a, a, a couple of questions about that, um, and he will answer in whatever way he thinks necessary. Okay, so let's take another word from our sponsors, uh, from our sponsor, and then we we'll come back uh, to Mr. Malcolm, Captain Malcolm Reader. Parkshire Trading got you covered for lumber electrical plumbing and we have power to and all your household needs. 23 years in serving Dominica. Parkshire Trading, your foundation to building success. Come see us at the Fun Colour Industrial Estate for all your building needs. Great customer service, convenient packet, delivery service, and best deals. Opening hours from 7.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. weekdays and 7.30 a.m. to 2 p.m. on Saturdays. Contact us on 449-9465 and order on WhatsApp on 225-8230. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Email Marktroy at cwdom.dm. Marktroy Trading got you covered for lumber electrical plumbing. And we have power to and all your household needs. You should know this by now. DBS got the number one sounds. There is no other. Oh, no, not in this world. Yeah, man. This is Glenn Washington. DBS at the bars. See? Right. We're back with Captain Reed. Uh, Captain Reed, let's talk a little bit uh, for a little while. In reference to the dreads, um, we have discussed with a number of dreads and the role that you all have played, um, according to them, terrorizing their lives. Upon reflection, tell me what do you think? To the, well, let's see. The dreads at one point in time were infiltrated by certain criminal elements and we had to attempt to remove the criminal elements not our fault bro and I will I will tell you uh, uh, what, what remains a mystery up to today that you Go out in the hills and these guys are firing at you 
with one of your own weapons. Somehow, and not and it didn't come out of defense force hands because our weapons were all numbered. Somehow, a free or free got into the hands of one of the gangs, one of the the, the, the gangs of dreads. And bro, I mean, I mean, I am scared of the thing. It is not pleasant to be facing a three or three in any way, shape, or form. Not even a blank from a three or three. That's good. Hold on, you are saying that you are actually scared as a military man. <laughs> what? Yes. Through the jungles, yeah. trained, and you are saying to me that your opponent had a free or free, and you were scared. But of course. But you know what you do. But you see, Reed, I mean, earlier today I was just thinking about about just that. And I'm saying, I'm going to ask Reed, you you get up in the morning, you you bathe, you say hello to your what, your, your wife, your children and stuff, and you are dressed in uniform. You have to follow orders. You have been given a, an order at whatever whatever rank you are at. And let's say we, we're talking about Captain Reed now, we're talking about the 70s. Mm. Yet you have to go out on a sortie now, out into the heights of Bells or the heights of wherever in Zion. And not knowing if you're going to come back, I was thinking about boy. Let I want I, I want to, I want to read really tell us what thoughts went to your head when okay. you left your home. No, no. I, I mean, I tell you frankly, yes. I was telling the folks at my church that only last year, yes, that death never occurred to me. Okay. Okay. I I, I was so that I didn't think about death, but. I mean, when I when I when we go into the hills, we know what the guys are carrying. They breaking the rules, laid words. They taking some farmers' shotguns, so they have the twelve gauge, they have the fourteen gauge, they have those those shotguns. Mm -hmm. That if you're good enough, they're not going to kill you. They're going to take a while to reload when they fire their two their two their two rounds. Yes. You understand? Yes. So you have the advantage. Yes. Even if the free are free, you have the advantage because you can load and reload and reload and reload. Yes. With the FNs, I mean, that's how, I mean, they don't stand a chance. Yes. But when you're facing a tree tree that can pick you up from a mile away, uh, right. we and you're talking to people that people, let me tell you, those guys, they knew the jungle. Right. They knew the jungle. So, 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 so what, my friend? No, but, but read, being scared is not a bad thing, you know, because you just said, because for me, knowing what, what you know a 303 can do, you left your home with your family and your, fo your, your, your job, you know, you, it's like, it's like this, the same job as somebody going to the ministry, sitting in, in behind the count, behind the desk. Yeah. Um, uh, without a typewriter. Your job is in the field and your life is at stake, not knowing if you're going to come back home alive. So what, what, so what, what, what's going in your head? I know, I know, but then, but then, bro, when you get mm -hmm. to your staging point, mm -hmm. all is all about your training and your confidence. Yes. You know you train, you know you super, yes. and you it's, it's about the confidence now. Yes. You know you've studied the thing, you've looked at your maps, you've done you've done your homework. Yes. And the thing, the nice thing about the jungle is you do move very quickly in the jungle. You move if you cover a mile in a day, depending on the circumstances, you cover a lot. Yeah, but 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 really, you going into in other words, if if you were to come to my home right now, right? Mm -hmm. Um, I built my house, Cecil, or even your house. Um, if you if you if you lock your keys inside your home, you would invariably know how to pass, where to pass in your home to get your keys. Right? Yes, that's in your home. So yes. you, so you just mentioned a while ago, mm -hmm. the guys have have left this this the city. They've gone up into the Zion. They have taken up the, 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 the as you know, from a military st standpoint, they have taken up the high, the high point. Yeah. Right? So they can see you mm -hmm. coming a mile mm -hmm. away yeah. long before you reach. So they, 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 so they know your terrain, which you now have to negotiate because maybe it's your first time going to that area. So it means that you never know at what point, whether they're behind you, above you, below you, have no idea. Yeah, but, but, but you see, the thing is, mm -hmm. I know that their weapons, I know what the, the range of their weapons are. Yes. So I can, I know what chances I can take with them. How would you, how would you have known that? Because they, they had shotguns. The shotguns are the 12 gauge, the 14 gauge, the 16 gauge, the 20 bore. Those shotguns, 
that they stole from farmers who want to hunt wild pig and so on. Yeah, but somebody could have had a, a rifle. And I mean, shotguns, but for, for persons who don't understand, a shotgun is what we call a, a, a scatter, scatter, shot. scatter shot. So it is, it's, it's, a, it's a, a, a broad range kind of coverage as, a, yeah. as, a, as opposed to a targeted yeah. rifle. But even then, read all you need is one, one even stray bullet. Right, that even even ricocheted off a of a rock or something, and you're dead. I could face that too, too. I don't. I didn't want to face the free of free. Exactly. Be- why? Because so, <laughs> if they talk about terrorizing, yes. my friend, there's a free of free out there, and we want to recover it. Period. Right. right. Okay. And so uh, it wasn't terrorizing. It was they. They look forward to get. Okay. So w- were you were you at any given time yourself, and your and your men? On the fire, of course. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> but but um, Evans 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 joined from again from the the joint operations the SSU. Um, Evans told us about his uh, his escapades. Evans um, maybe have a brush brush of death with sev- several times. What about you, Reed? Did you ever get get anywhere close to no life and death situation? No, no, <laughs> no. I I, I operate it differently. <laughs> because, because you see you see the thing about it is. If you want to go out on a sortie, yes. and you figure you want to go and run your sortie and get back home for five o'clock, yeah. that's up to you. Yes. I would decide to spend two days or three days taking my time about it because then in Dominica there's only so much so much you can you can run. Yeah, but that's Malcolm Reed. But you you have you have a squad. That's my of, training. Yeah, but you have a, but you have a squad of who are who are not as trained as you, who have a different perspective on on their. Yeah, their, yeah but their, I'm I'm in charge. Yeah, okay, but they have to cover you, and you have to cover them. Yeah, yeah. What, what about meals then? Oh, You're talking about two free days. Okay, okay all right. <laughs> we, one of the things we 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 survived on on creeks and and bello juice. Yeah. Okay. M- we survived on creeks. Emery's. And <laughs> that's, that's <everybody. laughs> yeah, and bellow juice. Okay, now, now, let me just make that point that during the dread days, yes. the merchants of Roseau didn't leave us hungry, bro. Okay, pulls up pig snout. Okay, bag of flour, bag of corn flour, bag of 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 cream of wheat. They just volunteered stuff to us because their 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 properties and stuff in the hills were under were on were in fire. Right. You understand? But then, when it was all over, we could hardly get a LPO from the cab sack. Right. But read. But I get that. But but let's let's go back a little bit in terms of rationalizing the whole thing. Right now, you have Russia and Ukraine, right? Or let's say Germany and 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 in um. Uh, J- Japan at, at war. That is that's different people, different culture, different stuff. But w- did you ever at w- at any point in time rationalize? You are going up into the hills. Let's say, let's say in Jodel, for instance, or let's say in Maho. You are from Maho, and so you have guys up in up in the hills or in Bells, like fellas like Mal and these guys, who maybe you knew, maybe some of them, maybe your your, your school friends, maybe your neighbors and whatever else. Who all of a sudden you didn't see them and you hear they're in the Zion. So now you're up there now, they are armed and you are armed, and it's a, it's a life and death situation because it's a question of who see who first, okay? Mm. What did, did it ever cross your mind that here you are up there pointing a 303 or your FN at somebody, and you can see it's in your sight, somebody you know? Uh, what, 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 did that ever happen to you at all? Several occasions. Wow. So how did you do that? Let me let me let me let me tell you, give you something interesting. Mal and I right. have been friends for life. Exactly. Okay. And I'm home on early morning. I am home at Maho. And I hear a sound. And Mal and three of his guys walk into my house. <laughs> In dreads. Yes. Okay. Because he was feeling the pressure. Okay. He was on the run. Mm-hmm. We, were, we, 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 we had them targeted. Okay. And Mal came home by me to rescue. With, two, with two, three of his guys. Rescue or 
to ask to surrender no to, to, surrender. to rescue what, what do you mean to rescue and just rescue? to come and take a rest and because what did you do in the process i let him take his rest because because read but he also had you in sight as well you know because i tell you um i i i, I did some research on mal henry mal esprit and hopefully we'll get him in here because he has his own perspective of what happened, what didn't happen. Yeah. But but again, that's the positive point. But you are let's say in Maho, you're up in the heights of, of bells, and you are you are inside. You're following orders. Yes. Mm. Your your fingers are not on the trigger to blow up one of, of your neighbors. Oh, or, but but Maho wasn't one of our targets. He was not key target. No, no, no. But even then, but no, no, no. At the time, if, if when when we, when we go into the into the uh, into the uh, May 29th situation, all that and dress, mm. the 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 act gave you the permission to blow off his head simply because he had, he had, he had, he had locked. Yeah, well, he was not one of our targets. As I say, we were looking for the for the criminal elements because um, generally the force and the dreads had a pretty good rapport before the whole thing came up. I mean, I mean, up in Jirodel, for example, our guys would go visit with those guys, Scrubolt and 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 Pocosion and the one, all those guys. We used to, our guys would go visit with them before all of that came up. Why? Just because we we figure we 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 we, we own the hills, so we keep a check on. How 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 you how you think we knew where to go and look for guys? How many you own the hills? But now what the military does, we own the hills. We are the jungle experts. <laughs> we own the hills, bro. And that is why I, I do not believe the report about the Jodel farmer who who play hero and say he, 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 he kill whatever they attack him. That wasn't that wasn't anything like that, bro. Because those guys used to be in, in the partner house all the time. If anybody you know who I'm talking about, is I call him nobody names. Right, right. But them guys used to be in the partner house all the time, my brother, in and out of his house. They were all friends. Okay. And there was a falling out. Okay. Why do you think there would, there, there would have been a falling out? Well, because again. some people figure that because it's Rasta, they can fool Rasta. They can work on Rasta. But you ever, you ever wonder where those guys get all those bags of seeds of ganja they plant in the hills so i don't know i don't know you ever wonder how we could be firing at you in 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 jodel and a deal it you firing at us in the middle in at niba chapara somebody wasn't moving all then well you know what you but you have you have look at one you know? okay <laughs> you understand <laughs> So, so there are some things that will never be explained. Right. And and, and again, there are some things that May 29th will have to cover up as well. Okay. Because nobody wasn't going to let that go. We lost Regist, one of our soldiers, one of our very good soldiers, one of our key woodsmen. Yes. We lost him. Yes. And we wasn't going to let that pass just that. We were going to investigate the thing now that the thing had been kind of eased up. No, no, no. Well, well, no, no. Well, if if you if you if you say it that way, then are you saying an eye for an eye or two for a tooth? Then because you lost wages, he was key, right? And you were you were incensed. The, the, the DDF was incensed by what happened, and the DDF did what they have to do in 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 uh, retribution or in or no, in, or that, in that, that we didn't get no, we, no we, that, that opportunity never showed up because the the, the perpetrators were, were picked up by the police. They were shot by the police. Yeah, but but Regis was Regis, Regis was 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 shot by some by by not by the DF or police, right? No. Exactly. So it was it would have been on the other side. So is so and it's, it's a, it it wasn't friendly fire. So it would have had to be on the other side, and you guys would not take it. Si, si, li, 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 oh, I see what I see what you mean. Something? I see what you mean. No, the mm. thing is, mm. when the whole dread issue was put to rest, mm. the military obviously began to review. Mm. And reconstruct and come to some conclusions mm -hmm. that said well as you see this have not so and larger bless mm -hmm. so somebody who could transport those guys on the main roads was doing so okay and somebody who had official clearance Okay. During those days, okay. and we 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 targeted. We we know we we well well well. There are two people. I mean, both dead now. I'm not going to call names, but 
the May 29th again, the uprising, it, it freed them. We'll get to that. We'll get to that. But but um, but um, we, we're still trying to get through to on the dread side as to your own. Because at the end of the day, Mali, today you are on, you are, you are talking to us from an you are individual your opinions your experiences that's mm -hmm. mali um as opposed to talking for and on behalf of the ddf we're talking about mali what what mali saw didn't do what you experienced mm -hmm. so here you are up, up there in 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 the hills um and your orders because you're following orders you were given an order by the ceo um to to go out there on a sortie and to take men that you are responsible for mm -hmm. and your job is to what what was your main job to to eradicate the marijuana fields or to or to uh, um, apprehend the dreads what 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 were you supposed to be doing oh, oh we were supposed to be targeting the criminal elements to do what to bring them to justice yeah which means but, but you didn't have any powers of arrest did you no right so how so if you so if you saw a dread if you if you happen to have gone into because my brothers i'm just saying that my brothers went all the way to numte um up in up in the um um mount prosper area and all that stuff mm -hmm. so you came across one of my brothers and stuff in his iron in in the jupa mm -hmm. um and your job would have been to what to arrest him or to or to or to apprehend him but you oh didn't, no but no you, but you want police you want police so no. what, what what was the job no we went, that, that is why the sorties were always mixed with the police the police did their work we just pre 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 Provided security for the police. Oh, I see. So the police would have gone in there and arrested the individual and, and burn what they want to burn and do their stuff. Uh, that is that is why we, I mean, we get a bad a raw deal for that, but we didn't we didn't do it. What is the raw deal that you would have received? Because because police defense forces the same for you know in the eyes of the public. But you dress, but yeah, but, but you, you dress, but, but you dress the same uniform. But you that, but you, you said that you you actually. Play the role of security for the yeah. police. For, for the police. Yes. What about the the, the, the the arms that you would have had? Was that part of the security to no, fire they, at people? No, they're, they're yes. One group. They, okay. they, they're in one group, says it. But guess what? There's no differentiation mm. in design no. between police and they, they all use the same uniform, you know. That's right. But what he's saying is that those persons who, who knew that DDF was with the police would have singled out the DDF and say, those fellas, but it was. They were over in, in, in accompaniment with the police. So how do you differentiate or separate? So what basically, what he's saying that the, the police job was just to, uh, was to arrest. Yeah. Their job is to secure. Well, to, to, and so they, to but they would, on, on the battlefield, they would have done the same thing. Yeah, but but the, def the defense force didn't have any powers of arrest. They could have arrested. No, and the, and the police and the police knew who they were looking for. They had their pictures. They had their whatever. They had their special information from the from the informants and so on. So they knew who they were looking so, so for. So by any chance, while the, while in the jungles, you would have met some of the people that you're looking for face to face. What would have been your reaction then? <laughs> well, well, that's a very good point because <laughs> I I wasn't present. As I put out a squad. And again, the police did send us on, um, on, on, on missions without their accompaniment. There we go. And I remember one of our soldiers, Soto. Soto is Etienne. And based on the photos that we showed him in the morning, he met with Leo Etienne, Pocosio. Pocosio. And he took him in. Well, the, 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 the group, the squad took him in. They asked him to accompany, and he accompanied. But I mean, of, of, obviously, you, you, I mean, you up there, I mean, you, Pocosia would not have been able to put up any resistance because he, he, in that, in, he, he couldn't say, you cannot arrest me, you're not police. You know what I'm saying? No. <laughs> he, he doesn't know the difference. No. But, but, but the, the point about it, Reed, is that in 1974, the Prohibited and Unlawful Societies and Associations Act, the Dread Act, was 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 enacted right and so there was there was a war on the dreads from 1974 to 1981 of which the the ddf in in sort with the police participated in in that day what, what do you call the war on dreads because the the if you look at the the um the, the edict of the edict of the of the act it gave you um, powers to shoot persons on site that's right right and then and there's no there's no re, uh, recrimination on your part there's there's no recourse yeah. on your part. Yeah. So I mean the act. I mean I guess you 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 would have read that act in in in, in detail. Yes. Exactly. And we and we and we, we we by and large we didn't bother about that. I mean who you don't go in and go and shoot a guy out. I mean let me tell you this man. Mm. You 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 pick up a youngster. Mm. Seventeen years. In the in the hills, mm. all right. And the guy don't know what day the wicked is. Exactly. 
he don't know what the other wicked thing is. He don't know. He, he don't know. He just. He just. But now let me tell you that the amount of youngsters we just tell boy go home, go to your mother home. What you doing here? Go home. Right. And the thing about it is the, the groups on them, they're easy to find. The groups easy to find in the hills, bro. You know what is a cottage? No, go ahead. You, may, you have a group of guys in an area for two weeks. They must find somewhere to go and shit. Okay. That's a cottage. Okay. You use your nose and you find them. Okay. But 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 again, Reed. Um, having said that, remember the guys are coming from. I tell you, who who was it? Now we had a, a discussion with somebody, Cecil. Was, mm -hmm. was it? Mm -hmm. Who said that? Um, when they realize how tough. Um, who was it we were discussing with? That because they are coming from Roseau, they didn't grow up in the hills. No. They say they go. They, they play. They play in Rasta. They play in Dread. That's my brother. Yeah, yeah, your brother. brother yeah, Rasta. right, right, right. I can't remember yeah. that. Play in Dread. When you go up there and get the hardship, all the rose you headed back to the concrete. Yes. Because no, so real. But when you came across that kind of situation, you have you seen those guys there. They they are lost. They 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 have no idea why they are according to you. What they were doing? No, and go back and tell mother home. But yeah, but they, but but prior to that, read prior to actually getting to them on a face to face, they are at a distance from you. You don't know what they have aiming at you, but you your all your guns are pointing at them. You see, anyway. you see, you see. That is why I, as I say, I operated the way I did because we would we would run an op an observation post okay. on those guys for a few hours. Okay, okay, okay. Because if they are there in the hills, they in the encampment. Right. You want to know who is coming and who is going. Right, right, right. You understand? That's right. You want to know who, who they're supporting, what they're doing. That's right. Okay. That's right. And so and so, you you want, you want to know whether they're attacking farmers' crops. You just want to know what's happening. Because so, some of the guys who you you, you figure pay their last. What pay their last in it? Them man hungry. Them man them man caught in a fig and boil a fig and so on and those kind of things there. Well, read, 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 no, read, no, but, but read. Hold on, read. But so, but if, if that's how you think at the time, yes. Why would you have gone to the bushes, oh, to the hills, to to to, to apprehend this in the first people? place? In again, place. again, the criminal element. Uh -huh. Again, the criminal element. That is what we had to do. Else, you'd have had a lot of innocent youngsters just go to jail, just get shot. I mean, we we were afraid to just to just kill them fellas. Yeah, right. We fought better of it by which you have our training. So how many persons that in the process of your your, your, your all um, in the heights would have would have killed? More than a few, but, but I'm not going to go into that. Okay. But read but but read, I mean the follow up question to says is that the, there's the allegation that the DDF and the police in court sort, they're going out on a sortie, they leave in Rosa with, let's say, 10 body bags, right? Yes. They're going up into the Zion, and when they come back, hands empty. Yes. That, that, no, no, which means that uh, persons are saying, even in the jewel area, and I've, I've heard, Wa well, was mentioning that a couple of times, where there are guys that he, he, he knew of, let's say, in the morning, um, the he met or whatever else, and before you know it, a couple of days after, the persons have disappeared. They they never seen them. Oh, again. I see, I see, you know I see, so I see. They, so they didn't turn to look at one to and they just disappeared. Which means that somewhere along the line, they went into oblivion. How about you had you had defections as well. Yes. You had fellas who make it to the back door by God, to, to God loop just overnight, just left the thing and went when the pressure was was on. Right. I am saying that. Also, empty body bags. The thing about it is that when you, when you, suppose you shot somebody, mm -hmm. the terrain wasn't such that you could just put something in a body bag and go with it, you know. Okay, no, I get that. You probably had to come back next day or, 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 or day after. But the, the, take, take, um, take the two guys who died when they shot my soul there. Mm. The three of them stayed in the bush all night. Mm -hmm. Okay, but but to say that um, I do not know about extrajudicial killings in terms of having killed fellas in the hills and buried them. But let me tell you that 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 is what happened in the dread camp, and you know, walk and walk and face me tomorrow. 
and 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 let us explain that among the Rathi dreads there were those who were killed by their brother dreads and buried in shallow graves because we found them okay okay but then but then read they act the, again i'm referring to the dread act it gave you permission to shoot on sight yes what it didn't and that's as you're saying that's as it's going to my head it doesn't give you any direction after you shot somebody on sight you know there is no no reprieve for you no 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 recommendation for you you're following the, the law gives you that permission mm -hmm. but then this the person was not shot in the middle of Roseau. They were shot in the heights of 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 Mont Diablo. Yeah. Um, but there was no direction to you as to what you do with that body because you're following the, the law that says you can do. That's right. And, and more so the person let's say the person was armed. So it's a question of self defense. Yeah. The person was shot. So it means that if if that happened, then it would have been your responsibility as well to have buried that in that that, that corpse, no? You have that you have that. Yes. Right. But that, that wasn't the case. But I mean, but well, the possibility I, was there. Okay, I, I think let's let's take a break um, to go um, forward from our sponsor, and then when we come back, we're going to focus on May 29th. Okay, leading up to May 29th. Okay. Maxtrack Trading got you covered for lumber, electrical, plumbing, and we're power to and all your household needs. 23 years in serving Dominica. Max Right Trading, your foundation to building success. Come see us at the Fun Color Industrial Estate for all your building needs. Great customer service, convenient packet, delivery service, and best deals. Opening hours from 7.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. weekdays and 7.30 a.m. to 2 p.m. on Saturdays. Contact us on 449-9465 and order on WhatsApp on 225-8230. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Email Max Troy at cwdom.dm. Mark Troy Trading got you covered for lumber, electrical, plumbing, and power to and all your household needs. You should know this by now. DBS got the number one sounds. There is no other. Oh no, not in this world. Yeah, man. This is Glenn Washington. DBS at the bars. See. It? Well, we are back and uh, we are here with uh, Captain. I'm sure that I have it right this time. <laughs> you uh, have I it don't right. I my salary to go. <laughs> we are here with Captain Malcolm Reed. Uh. And uh, we are now getting into uh. um, May 29th. Or 29th of May, 1979. Yes. Malcolm, mm -hmm. today marks the 43rd year of some person say bloody tuesday do you coin it as bloody tuesday no what would you say it would, i wouldn't call it bloody tuesday because i mean there wasn't any blood spilled as such one person died which i had find was admirable restraint on the part of the of the the military forces oh, you go, before we go to that um, malcolm let me just set the 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 the, the parameters for the discussion along those lines. Um, the, again, it's unfortunate. We're well, not unfortunate, but it's just that you have not seen the documents that I'm going to be referring to. So <laughs> just bear with me a little bit. Um, there were two reports, um, an interim report that was uh, presented to His Excellency Aurelius Murray on 6th of June, 1980. Um, and that interim report, it says... Um, having been appointed commissioners under the provisions of, of the Commissions of Inquiry Ordinance to inquire and report upon all facts relating to, one, the events which took place in the precincts of government headquarters on May 29, 1979, two, the death of Philip Timothy and inquiries suffered by a number of other persons in the area surrounding the government headquarters. Injuries. Built. Well, that's what it says. It's, I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm just reading what's, what's here. The death of Philip Timothy and the injuries suffered by a number of other persons in the area surrounding the government headquarters buildings on May 29th, 1979. And the third, the conduct of the Defence Force and the Dominica Defence Force in relation to the said events. That is the preliminary um, interim report. Mm -hmm. And then there was a final report, again, that was presented to um, uh, Aurelius Murray, who was the president mm -hmm. at the time, yeah. on March 27th, 1981. 
and again it makes reference to exactly the same the same parameters for the discussion so going forward we will try and see what you would want to uh, give us some tidbits that we probably people didn't know about or didn't, didn't hear about um, and i will try to pull out from the the report what i think is um interesting and you may, you may want to add on or subtract or divide from what mm -hmm. the case has um, going forward. So, Cecil, what was it? Yes, um, Ma Mali. I, I want, as we, we speak, as a matter of fact, I should say to you, Mali, that a good friend of yours, um, um, Danny, Danny Reed, yes. says to, to, to tell you that, um, says to me that to, to, um, to inform you that he's listening and he likes what you're doing. Um, Mali, can you tell us prior to the 29th, what was the plan discuss um, both yourself i mean when i say yourself the dominica defense force and that of the royal police force i wasn't i wasn't privy to that to that discussion that discussion was held at a higher level than i newton deputy chief the chief and when newton came back to barracks he he gave me my instructions. The instructions were to protect the vulnerable point. That would be the ministerial building, which you know. Okay, there's there are two. There is a vulnerable point, and there is a key point. The ministerial building was the vulnerable point. The House of Assembly was the key point within the vulnerable point. And we had heard that the crowds were going to gather and so the police would have prevented the crowds and we would stand by at our headquarters to back up as usual. All right, so let me let me just give a, a little a little again a background to the to the question that um, uh, Cecil asked. That um, on Friday, May twenty fifth, an emergency meeting of the Civil Service Association was held at the Guru oh. Parish Hall, where copies of the draft bill were circulated. Um, the meeting thereafter adopted unanimously a resolution that the civil servants should 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 absent themselves from work on on the Tuesday, May twenty ninth and assemble outside the government headquarters building for the purpose of demonstrating their opinion to the proposed amendment. As far as it, it applies to, to, the, to the DDF at the time, um, the, the, the Prime Minister um, wished the Acting Commissioner of Police, along with the Commanding Officer of the Defence Force, Major Newton, to attend a meeting mm -hmm. at his office at the government headquarters at 7.30 a.m. Um, according to the Commission of Police, that's what date? On the 28th. Mm -hmm. The day before. Right. Monday the 28th. Right. According to the, to the Acting Commission of Police, the meeting discussed the plans, the planned breakdown of law and order by the trade unions. The Prime Minister announced, and that uh, is, is critical, the Prime Minister announced that a proclamation would be, in, would be issued for the purpose of prohibiting mm -hmm. the holding of public meetings in Roseau from May 29th to June 4th. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, he said the, the 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 prime minister said he wanted the security forces to take all possible actions to prevent the breakdown of law and order and to prevent a recurrence of the storming of the House of Assembly. That was nineteen that was nineteen seventy one um, by the people, as was done in, in December 19, 16, 19, 1971. He added that he would like the security forces to take all the necessary measures to prevent the demonstration outside of government headquarters building if there was an attempt to hold one because that would disrupt the sitting of the house the prime minister discussed with those present how the government headquarters could be cordoned off to achieve those measures so according to reed he was not uh, at, at that meeting his commanding officer was um, and then the commanding officer arranged a meeting at his headquarters that's uh, the ddf headquarters at which Captain Reed, Lieutenant Dyer, and Sergeants Durant and Blairs attended to discuss the operations which they should undertake the following day. That's, that's a sequence of events. On the night of May, of, of, of May 28th, a public meeting was held at the Trade Union Hall in Queen Mary Street. It was a large meeting at which the speakers were Charles Maynard, Anthony Frederick Joseph, Afi Martin, 
Curtis Augustus and Charles Savre. A remarkably efficient Sergeant of Police 157 Rita Seraphine attached to the CID attended that meeting and made notes. So then we so go hold into. On. I just want to ask Reed. Yeah? Um, so, Reed, in, in, on May 28th, mm -hmm. um, you all would not have had n no dealings with that meeting that was held um, by the by the union. No. You all would have been at your barracks. Yes. All right. So there's nothing that they would have. Now, on the 29th, at what time did you all had to assist the police by creating that security for the state? There was no police to assist. Why not? Because the police didn't hold up to the end of the bargain. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Pause, 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 pause. There. Um, let's just take it in 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 in, in sequence. In, in sequence. Um, I, I'm just going back to the meeting. Um, where the no, I the, only asking about the meeting because I, I I don't want to to prolong because I want to know the relevance in the meeting of the 20th, and he's saying that there is no relevance. No. So I think I'd rather go to the 29th where they were part and parcel of the whole program. Well, in well, so it says there, the events which took place in the prisons of government quarters building, and it, so now we're talking about the early, early in the morning, May 29th. Is that what you know? Right, that's what I'm talking about. So early in the morning of Tuesday, May 29th, people started to assemble on the roads. And so, again... So hold on, hold on. So, so before, before, you, before you go, I just want to find out from Reed, and then you can come to that document. Mm -hmm. I just want to find out from Reed, at what time, um, military time, that you all found yourselves having to leave your barracks to get to the spot that we discussed the day before. Well, there's a sequence. There's, 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 there's yeah, I know there are sequence, but I want to know. Well, tell you what time. Yeah. No, no, I, I want to find out from him. I, 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 I would say between oh, between eight is, uh, between eight and nine between eight and nine thirty that that kind of time. Okay. And, and so so how would you all have decided between eight and nine to get to? Because I, I was I was the joint commander on the ground okay. with the deputy chief of police. So which means that you would have been there mm. before your guys get to the area. I, I I was also the first intelligence officer. What do you, what do you mean the first intelligence officer for the both intelligence both, both for the police and no for the that's for the DDF. Right, yeah. Now I went down early o'clock to do a recce on the vulnerable point. That is the ministry headquarters, government headquarters. When I got down there, I found that the police, there was no police inside. And that's what time? That was prior to 8 o'clock. Right, eight o'clock. That yeah, they were supposed to be there before that would, time. Would, would read, sorry, would Ma, um, would have um, um, Newton indicate to you all in terms of military time what time that you would have arrived or what time the police would have arrived at, the, at that time? They time. were supposed to be in place from seven o'clock. Okay. Okay. Uh -huh. Now, on recognizing that they were not present and the crowd was already beginning to build up not 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 massive i moved across to the police headquarters so i could have a conference with my with my joint commander when you say your joint commander you're talking the police force that would be deputy chief joseph abraham jo yeah joseph of the Dominica police, police force. force, yeah, okay. he was the deputy chief of police. Mm -hmm. He's a man I respected highly, highly. And when I got across to the police outside the gate, I met Mr. Joseph, but I also saw police troops in the yard about 18, 19, 20 of them drawn up neatly in their two files but there were two officers with them two gazetted officers with them giving them instructions that, are to that were totally opposite and contrary to what they were supposed to be receiving from the deputy 
And the deputy told me, he turned to me and he said, Chief, he called everybody Chief, Chief, my men are not obeying my orders today. That is what Mr. Joseph told me. My men are not obeying my orders today. And there were the two officers, two gazetted officers, one that always wearing army, army clothes and a short pants and, 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 and hose, <laughs> and the other one soon, soon after became chief of police, the red man. So, uh, so are you saying, uh, uh, because you see we are here for the good, the good of, 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 of the nation, and, and you, you, you call people by, 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 by description. So I, 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 I know you said red man and you said that he became chief of police. Are you talking about Desmond, um, Desmond Blanchard? Possibly. But, but Cecil, uh -huh. Cecil, Cecil. Uh -huh. um, again, all I can do, for, and for those persons who are asking, the document I have is available from the printery. It's only about $5 if you want to get a copy of the report, you can read it yourself. It says, it was known that the meeting of the House of Assembly was arranged to commence at 10.30 that day. Anticipating a large crowd, the Acting Commissioner of Police had requested 30 policemen from country districts to strengthen his headquarters staff. At 8 a.m., he briefed his officers and other ranks. By 8.45, 15 policemen and 10 plain clothes policemen of the CID and Special Branch had taken up positions inside the headquarters building. They were joined by a detachment of 10 soldiers under Sergeant uh, Durant, that's DDF. None of these men carried arms. About 50 policemen under the direction of Acting Assistant Superintendent Moise were posted on the ground floor of the and around the building. Stop here. Is that a fact, Malcolm? Let me continue reading. I, I don't know. I don't know about that. But you wouldn't have seen that because he's. No. A, remember, they were on the on the first floor, on mm -hmm. the ground floor. Mm -hmm. So around no, but, but, outside. But remember, but remember, Malcolm said that when he saw no officers, no police officers. Yeah. No, there was absolutely no crowd he control. Went, he went. He went to the police headquarters. He met about twenty men to the most. And they did not want to take the advice yeah, of no, the deputy. No, That's what, what he no, said. no. I'm, you're talking about the building. You're talking about the, 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 no, po the point. There are two, hold on, hold on, There are yes. two points. Uh -huh. Because he, as intelligence officer, he did a number of recce's. That means mm -hmm. um, scouting around mm -hmm. to report back. And and what's critical, Cecil? Nowadays, everybody has cell phone. That's something else people don't realize. Nowadays, at the time, the police and the DDF were so under equipped. That there was no communication, no, no communication, no, no radio communication. They didn't have walkie-talkies. They didn't have anything. Mm -hmm. So it was, a, it was a physical thing to go, come to, and right. go, come and go. But right. so here, so here it is. Mm -hmm. So, so his recce would have would have um, told him that there was nobody, no police officers outside the government headquarters. But they were they were uh, on the on the ground floor, including ten of his men on the ground floor. Right? It says. Um, uh, none of these policemen carried arms, nor were, no, nor were all of them equipped with buttons because, it says the head, because there was not enough buttons for use by all the men on duty. Okay? So that is one, one side of it. So, so Reed went back to his, his HQ and reported to his commanding officer. Tell us now, Reed, what happened. I, I reported back to, to Fred that mm -hmm. the plan had fallen through. Because the police who were supposed to be, as a matter of fact, I heard these 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 guys officers telling the police who were this who were supposed to be going down there, mm -hmm. do not look threatening, take your time and stroll down. Mm -hmm. The crowd will welcome you. Mm -hmm. And I want one one pol at least one police officer who wasn't that detailed to call me and to deny it tonight. Mm -hmm. Okay, you, you know, challenging one officer. Mm -hmm. Okay, you know, because because. As a matter of fact, the crowd cheered them when they when they when they got close by. Yeah. The cheer, the crowd welcomed them. Right. Welcome the police. Yes. Right. Right. Okay. And the crowd was in was in the act of disrupting the the the, the free flow of traffic to the House of Assembly that the Prime Minister couldn't go in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I went up and I told Fred, "Well, that's the position." He decided to dispatch the, and by that time the crowd had built up appreciably. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
We're talking about between 12 and 15,000 people. Mm -hmm. the, 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 the crowd went down. The, 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 um, the riot squad went down. The riot squad of the police. The Defense force, the police, the police riot squad didn't activate. Right, before, before they, they, they didn't even wear masks. Before we go to the, to the, the defense force squad went down. Because again, I'm just reading um, from what is written here and, and from other interviews we've had with persons who were underground. So there's, there was, again, there's a sequence. Um, it's, it's, it's saying again that the police were very uh, under-equipped with buttons. They only had um, so many shields and all that kind of stuff that's in there. Now, it says that um, the, the commissioner believed that the, demonstration, demonst the demonstrators would storm the building. At that stage, he decided to use, um, no, that was, that was a, di a different area, a different time, where the, the commissioner of police requested, um, uh, he requested um, assistance from Major Newton. It says that um, the acting commissioner of police said that, said that the crowd was chanting aloud, Leo must go, Austin must go, as if there was a, as if it was a carnival band. Although he did not see anyone signaling to them, he believed that the crowd was responding to a signal because the chanting, which was intermittent, appeared to him to be controlled as to its timing. And when the gate was wrenched from its moorings and the police, and the police cordon had to be hurriedly positioned to prevent demonstrators from entering the building, although none of them uh, were said to have attempted to do so, he believed that the demonstration, demonstrators would storm the building. At that stage, he decided to use tear gas as the only means of crowd, crowd disposal. He had arranged the day before with Major Newton for a riot platoon to be manned by members of the defense force and mustered at police headquarters. So what he's saying is on the, prior, on the 28th, he had spoken to Major Newton. He figured something would be happening. And if, if it were to happen, then the defense force and police would have met, mustered, mm. met, and have a joint operation at police headquarters. Let, let, let me just take that caller there. I see that person. Has been, some people have been calling. Let's see what that person has to say quickly. Good, good evening to you, caller. Good evening, sir. Is the program live? The program is live, ma'am. Ah, okay. So, speak, speak louder, please. Speak louder, please. Yeah, we need questions for people to make their comments, give their comments. I, I, I don't want to do that right away, ma'am, because if I do that, we're going to just, you know, um, so people will have time time to make the comment, all right? Well, Sorry, right. no, yes, let it go on. Thank you. Oh, yeah, cool. all right, bye. Yes. So, 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 um, I, I want to find out from you, um, um, Reed. When you all arrived at, um, on Kill Avenue, just before that, there's this, because before that, Cecil, mm -hmm. there's, there's arriving at, 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 at Kill Avenue, there's a sequence that took them there, Cecil. And they and because remember, it was well, he said, he said, according to, according to Malcolm, he said that. The police did not take, or did not um, take the order that they were supposed to take. There was no, there was no, no crowd control. Right. So by that, by that time, they gave the signal to their men at the bar at the barracks to find themselves in in. in yeah, in what's the sequence, sir? What is the sequence? Yes, yes. He says. Right. But you see, I, you see, I, I'm not into all of this because you see, as as you said, I mean, sorry to say, I'm not into all of this. That's what I'm. That's what I meant. Sorry. Mm. Um. Malcolm said that he has not seen the report, mm -hmm. and I would like to get the story of what Malcolm mm -hmm. um, thinks. Because what I do not want to, to do is to take all of the time and get into the documentary that you have, mm -hmm. and Malcolm doesn't have the time to give his story. Because what Malcolm can do is either refute what you say, yes mm -hmm. or no, but I really want to hear from Malcolm mm -hmm. what the story is. Mm -hmm. If you understand what I'm saying. I hope you understand uh, Malcolm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so far. Because, because I, I really would like to get Malcolm's story. So, mm -hmm. so, so that is why I'm saying what you're reading there is fine. Um... But I, I, I do not want to have it be read in advance of what Malcolm is to say. Yeah, but before they got to the, to, to the to this to um, Kennedy Avenue, mm -hmm. there uh, there's a, there, were, there were options. Right. Exactly. So right. But but, so, but we don't lead him to that. So 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 okay. Let's find out from you now, um, um, Malcolm. What were the what were the options that you all had? The first of all, the the the, the whole scenario. Of dispatching 50 police officers to be inside of the building, there was not that wasn't part of anything at all. I don't know where that come from, and I don't know whether that really happened. Okay, the the, the thing had been as the the as the meeting as the meeting with the with the, with the PM had indicated, 
prevent the crowd from assembling out there that morning. That was the whole be all and end all of the mission. That was the mission. Mm -hmm. So the mission had been, no matter if you get how much police, they had to be outside. So the order was not followed by the police? That's that is my saying. position. Okay, that's what you're saying? Yes. Okay. Um, Richard, I think you, ha you have something to say? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, what, I'm, what I'm saying, the, the understanding apparently from what the, the, the request of the, the, the Prime Minister at the meeting to the Commander of the Defence Force and the Acting Commissioner, there were two separate um, requests because the police, their job um, and their job of the Defence Force were, were different. So the, on the, it's apparently there was a different understanding of what the role of the Defence Force would have been versus what the role of the police would have been on that day. I, 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 I well, oh, so let me, let me hear from Malcolm. The, is, the, is, is the, the, we were not supposed to have gone in if the police had controlled the crowd. Right, so, so that's what I'm saying that I, 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 I want to hear Malcolm's story because here it is, you are, you are, you are insinuating that, that they both would have been there but they both would have been doing different roles mm -hmm. and Malcolm is saying to you, no, that's not what it is. No. They were supposed to be at the barracks. He was supposed to get that's there. That's all. He was supposed to get there to find out. As they said, we were supposed to have, to have hold up at the, at the, at the, at the police station. Police quarters, right. And then if they require you, you will yeah. then come. Yeah. And when he did his, his OP, that's what you call it? My recce, yeah. Yes. When he did his recce, he found out that the police officers who would have been or should have been there were not present. Yeah, but, but how do you how do you control a crowd with fifty men inside of the ministerial building? What are you telling me? Your 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 job is crowd control. Mm -hmm. That's it. And you didn't do it. And by virtue of that, what did the Newton directed. Newton sent in, he called, well, he, as he called a meeting with Dyer and Blaze. Dyer and Blaze is who? Lieutenant Dyer, who was in charge of number two platoon. Oh, that's two people. So, okay. And um, I think, no, Marshall was already at the ministerial building. Mm -hmm. and, the, and, and, you know, there's only one thing there that I want to comment on that is ac almost accurate, is the, the signal to the crowd was coming from a senator inside of the house. Every time he went out of the house, he went on a little porch and raised a handkerchief to his nose, the crowd came up. So that was, that was, that was, that, that explains I, I, that. I, 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 what were you at that time to, deter, uh, to, to make that? Uh, that report, that report is from Sergeant Dura. Okay, because to Marshall, me. Because Major Dura was upstairs. That's right. Okay. So he was, he was the officer that was responsible to be upstairs together with? With, with the other nine soldiers. Okay. Okay. No, no. No. I mean, 50 police officers inside of the Ministry of Building. 50? Who are you talking to? What 50? And what was the original plan then? And the 50, the 50 would have been sufficient to keep the crowd at bay. Don't tell me about, about buttons and those kind of things because the police, as a matter of fact, the police, when we trained in the police role, of for crowd dispersal, not only the military role. And they had the weapons, they had the baskets, they had the shields, they had the 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 um the the things. Tear gas? They, they had tear gas, but they had the masks, the gas masks. Mm -hmm. They had all of that because again, almost every time we trained overseas. The British allowed us to bring in those things, those those extra supplies that we had. So why would they then claim that they were under equipped? Well, that is that is them, that is them. I'm not going to to, to try to to figure it out for them. Mm -hmm. But you're talking about sending 50 police into the ministry of building to do what? And you're supposed to be outside on the ground, on the ground, preventing people from coming up. So but I am saying that I heard gazetted officers talking to the squad who was to go down there and telling them not to look threatening, not to do anything, don't make anybody think you come there to do any trouble. You just take your time and walk down there. The crowd going to welcome you and the crowd did welcome them. 
because I was right behind them. Wasn't that, the, wasn't that a, a, a very good advice by, by, by the officers who inform the police officers that they should go there and not um, terrorize? No, because, because the crowd was supposed to have been pushed back. Okay. They're supposed to have pushed back the crowd and made sure that the mysterious building was accessible so that the ministers and the opposition could go in and have their house of assembly and do what they had to do. Well, the information as, as presented seems to just suggest that evidently the senior police officers on duty understood that the measure of control they should exercise over the crowd should be directed to keeping the crowd away from the precincts of the government building. That's right. Right. On the other hand, it seems that the objective of the officers of the, of the defense force was to disperse the crowd. Yes. Altogether. And not merely to keep the crowd away from the immediate precincts of the building. Exactly. Well, so Be because so the crowd has already overrun the place. Yeah, no, but the, but no, but remember you you dealing with 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 preliminary orders that ha that needs to be modified as the event happened. But what I'm just saying is that based on on what was documented here, it looks like there were two objectives where the the defense force because in terms of the approach and how the defense force dealt with their their their, their actions. Um, was different because remember the police. I I, I guess is I guess is is poor planning, the six P's poor planning in that the police as well as your your guys who were in there at the time were all unarmed and did not have any any um uh, PPEs or anything to do with if with, with you control. couldn't we couldn't put armed 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 soldiers in the in the house of assembly. No, I'm just I'm, I'm just I'm just going the parameters. So mm -hmm. in terms of so when 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 the tear gas let's say was 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 um was um applied, although the commission of police had anticipated that, but he did not equip his 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 men who were on the ground floor in readiness for if and when tear gas would have been applied. No. Right. So your guys were also caught in, caught in, in that situation. As well yes. Because they, did, they, were, they were not also equipped, even from your side. So so knowing, and which means that, I'm um, read that when... What, when what, do you mean, what do you mean that they were not equipped? They, they, they did not have any, any gas. No, they were down, all of that wasn't supposed to be happening. Exactly. They did not have right. any gas. Mask. The crowd was not right. supposed to have been where it was. Right. 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 So, so, um, so indeed... In terms of the modification of all of that, because of there was no communication, major, major communication flaws. There was no, there was no communication to upgrade or update because it's a, it's a, it's a ball by ball. Things are happening that you have to modify differently. The understanding is the, the commission of police ask for help of the, of the, of the defense force, the riot squad. Yes, but then when you ask for the military to come in, what do you expect? Well, well, the, the, the military. But again, exactly, exactly. The, you, you ask for the military to to come in. You don't expect to do police work. Yes, exactly. But the police, his own men. That's the point I'm trying to make. Read that he, when he asked for the help of the defense force, his own men that he had placed on on the ground were not equipped to receive the 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 aftermath or the effects of 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 defense force work, which which would have been what you told you did. Um, to deploy tear gas and stuff. So his men were caught just like even your men as well um, when when tear gas was disposed. But having said that, before that, the you had two approaches. You could come down Bath Road and based on one what is said, based on your intelligence to your your CEO, you you suggested a different route. That's why you could have come down Bath Road or end up in the crowd and, and being clogged along there. Or come up I'm carrying the avenue, which is what you you, you 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 suggested, right? Yeah. Exactly. So that's what I'm saying. There's a we could we couldn't we couldn't come down Bafford. Bafford was, was was just blocked. That was it. Oh, exactly. And so that is where the police ought to have held the place open. Well right. So okay, so having so, said that, go ahead, go ahead, sir. So I, I want to find out from you now on arrival at um um at at, at oh, sorry, on arrival at Kill Kill Avenue. What was your plan? I wasn't on Kennedy Avenue. <laughs> Dyer, the Dyer and the riot squad did Kennedy Avenue. I did the ministerial building compound. Mm -hmm. And that, that's where, we, that's where we, um, we have, we have the, the, um, okay, so, yeah. so in, so in his opinion, that's why he says here, in his opinion, as his, as, as in Reed, in his opinion, the crowd was extremely violent so that his, so that his advice to Major Newton, who never visited, by the way, Newton never came, never left his... No, he, he, he was responsible for headquarters. For HQ. 
um, who never visited the scene to, sat to satisfy himself. I mean, that's that's what the, the the commissioners of this report are saying. The commissioners no, 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 have yeah. no idea what he's talking about. Yeah, bro. yeah, but from a military standpoint, obviously. So why would you say that, then, um, Malcolm? Be because because the commander of the force has his trained troops. He has his confidence in his troops. Mm -hmm. And he sends out, out, out on a mission. You expect Newton to go in the bush and, and run the hundreds? Mm. Mm. He has big, I mean, the commander of the force, he, he really implements government policy, mm. training, headquarters, salaries. He runs those things. The, the second in command runs the force. Mm -hmm. So he's the administrator, basically. Mm? Yeah. I run the force, bro. Yeah. So he's used to us. Okay. I, I run the force. I was his adjutant. I run the force. So he has higher level work to do than that mm. okay and you have no need to come down and 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 and, and second guess anybody yeah but that's, that's, just, that's what the comment that's it, it was made but anyway so um so the next so based on reed's advice newton accepted the advice and um the, and the, also the, the call from the commissioner but well, the commissioner had already um requested the the, the thank the, you he already requested the use of the of the defense force. thank you realize, yeah, that, all right it's, it's written here and then, um, Cecil, coming to, to your point, they, they ended up, um, and there's a sequence of events of sorry, having apply, having um, arrived on Canyon Avenue, and we had that discussion with, with, um, with, with Vincent as the sequence of what happened and the stone throwing, and so I don't know if you want to go into that. No, no, he said that he wasn't there, so I, I rather we... Because he, he, he said that he was not on Canyon Avenue. No, I was on Canyon Avenue at all. I was, I was on the... I was more on his Bro Street now. Right. Yeah, but but, right. but yeah, but but he was in on his Bro Street subsequent to the deployment of tear gas from his uh, because Dyer is his junior. So at what time were you on his Bro Street? As soon as the 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 squad left our compound, I moved down. I didn't follow them. I moved down to the, the bottom to the to the to the ministerial building right. because I was still concerned about the lack of security yeah there, there was no presence outside of the ministerial building there was no security forces present you couldn't see a, a uniform outside there you couldn't see anything and that looking like a security force the yard was full up with all kind of everybody that is why they were able to get to the gates that's right. Of the of the of the of the head of the yeah. government headquarters yeah. to shake it down. That's right. In the absence of the of the police. That's right. Okay. And so and so I went there and began to try to restore order as best I knew how. There were some troops with me. In the meantime, Dyer and his group and his guys we're dealing with the Kennedy Avenue end. At that time, was Patrick Joint already and his government ministers already in the building? Well, I mean, again, Cecil, there's a. There, I, if, if you can, you, you can check the sequence. No, of, I, I of know that we can. Well. We, I, I just want to timeline. Because time he came down with Pond. He came down with, with um, Sergeant Pond. And Blaze. And Blaze. Mm -hmm. So I don't remember exactly. Yeah. Okay. Yes, I'm, I'm Richard, so help us in that one. Right. So, um, he said that um, uh, earlier that morning, a riot platoon under the command of Lieutenant Arthur Dye had assembled at police headquarters and had been issued with canisters of tear gas in addition to their own supplies. The acting commissioner left the government building for the for police headquarters where he informed, he informed Lieutenant Dyer that the police were unable to control the crowd and he wished the assistance of the riot platoon to disperse the crowd. Lieutenant Dyer you, you, you hear the word? Yeah, yeah. To disperse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I said. <laughs> Lieutenant Dyer told him that he could only respond if he was so ordered by his commanding officer, Major Newton, who was not there at police headquarters. At that time, Captain Reed, who was at police headquarters, informed the acting commissioner that the prime minister asked that Mr. Joseph be informed that he would be leaving his residence at Mount Bruce for government headquarters at 9.40 a.m. Mm-hmm and that the premises must be cleared of demonstrators. Major Newton, who arrived about this time, gave Mr. Joseph a smaller, a similar message, whereupon he instructed Superintendent Philip to telephone and advise the Prime Minister that he should not come down to the government, government building right. at 9.40 as he had planned, because it would be unsafe. Later, 
Acting Superintendent Philip informed the Acting Commissioner that the Prime Minister had asked to be advised when all was, when all was clear. Being concerned about the state of the, of the crowd, the, com the Acting Commissioner spoke to Major Newton, who advised Lieutenant Dyer to take the riot platoon to government headquarters. Unfortunately, no discussion took place between the Acting Commissioner and any officers of the Defence Force as to the route that the riot platoon should, would take from police headquarters to government yeah, buildings. There was no need for that. That's critical. Nor was any attempt made to coordinate the action between the, the, uh, the action taken by the defense force with any measures which were being carried out by the government building because there's no communication. Captain Reed, who was the operations and intelligence officer of the defense force, advised Major Newton about the conditions of the scene and about his assessment of the behavior of the crowd. Okay, so. Now, let's put it that way. Did you see when Patrick entered? I don't remember. You don't remember? No. Okay. I, I, um, I don't think you would have seen. What would you have heard when Patrick entered from your office, from your men? What would, what would he have said to you? Well, wait, we didn't have communications. You didn't have any communications? No, we didn't have any communications. Right. At what time would you remember that the twelve to 15,000 people decided to um invade as soon as the as soon as the the military arrived the 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 the, the crowd was had already built up mm -hmm. okay and that is that's 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 where it's that's where it is and, and what would you have done now as the military in terms of ensuring that you're secured what would you have done well, i don't know about we being secure because because i mean we were in the heart of the beast and we had to disperse the crowd and and while you were in the heart of the beast, anyone um, got onto you all? Anyone fought with you all? Anyone insulted you all? Anyone spat on you all? Stones. Stones. Yeah. Right. So. But but read read. Would there have been a difference between the dispersal of the crowd or preventing the crowd to enter the government building? What is the difference? To, to prevent the crowd from entering the building, you'd have to take preliminary precautions. Right. Your your block your blockages your control. Prior. That is crowd control. But prior, where you'd have had to do that before. That's right. Exactly. That's what the police was supposed to have done. And so by then it was too late to do anything. Yes, and so and so with the various requests we got were to disperse. Right. So now the event sequence timing nine fifty nine. You arrive at the crossroads Kennedy Avenue and Queen Mary Street and ordered to the bus. That's the that's the riot squad. Yeah. Ten o'clock. Now, that is uh, that's, uh, that's, uh, that's that is anecdotal because you were elsewhere. But that's I was what, elsewhere. That's what's written as yeah. to what Dyer did. Um, Ten o'clock. Order was given to fix bayonets. Ten o one. Order to advance. Uh, Ten o two. Order to halt approximately ten meters from Arawak Cinema. Crowd was chanting and shouting, and one or two stones were were, were thrown. No, it says one or two. <laughs> it says one or two stones were thrown. Uh, Ten o three. Would, would, would you agree? But no. You have, but, uh, but, no, but, no but, I want to find out from him. No, I, 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 I would never agree because because where I was. I want to hear. I want to, want, I want to hear. But you want to know? No, I, I want to hear what he, what he said. Where I was uh -huh. stationed uh -huh. at the government headquarters. Uh -huh. It wasn't one or two. I know about that. I don't know about the, the riot squad. Because right. yeah. the riot squad getting one or two stones, they wouldn't have had to to, re, to revert to certain certain actions. Okay. Well, 10.03. Crowd was warned by the platoon commander as Dyer to disperse. No response from crowd. But crowd started to throw stones at the platoon. Exactly. At 10.04, at crowd was told to disperse or gas would be used. 10.05, order was given to fix, bayonet, fix respirators and the banner men were told to display the banner. Crowd again want to disperse. At 10.06, the gas men were ordered to prepare to throw and then ordered to throw. Two grenades and four cylinders were thrown. Crowd started to started, started to run up Kennedy Avenue. Now, based on the report, read mm. what is what is what is um, written here. Uh, it is it is suggesting that because of the application of tear gas at that point in time, which would have infuriated the crowd, that is what that's what uh, resulted in this all of this stuff. Reed does hold that thought. Does hold that thought. Let's take a word from our sponsors, or from our sponsor.
and then we come back. Parkshire Trading got you covered for lumber, electrical, plumbing, and we have power to and all your household needs. 23 years in serving Dominica. Max Wright Trading, your foundation to building success. Come see us at the Fun Color Industrial Estate for all your building needs. Great customer service, convenient packet, delivery service, and best deals. Opening hours from 7.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. weekdays and 7.30 a.m. to 2 p.m. on Saturdays. Contact us on 449-9465 and order on WhatsApp on 225-8230. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Email Max Troy at cwdom.dm. Mark Troy Trading got you covered for lumber, electrical, plumbing, and we have power to and all your household needs. You should know this by now. DBS got the number one sounds. There is no other. Oh no, not in this world. Yeah, man. This is Glenn Washington. DBS at the bars. See? Okay, so yes, I'm Richard, you're asking. Yes, yeah, so no, I was just saying, Cecil, that... Um, I just want to tell the listeners, by quarter past 11, we will actually entertain your calls. Yes. Yeah, yeah no, I was just, uh, just saying that, um, given what happened, the, the, the inference from this, from this document seems to suggest that it's because the, the, um, the DDF, but again, really saying, that's what the military was trained to do, that's what they did. Yeah, but, 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 but I, mean, I mean, what do you expect? When, you, you, you look, at, you look at, at, at situations in France, mm. in the U.S., mm that people pick up tear gas and pelt it back at you right you understand right that is what is that's 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 expected that's right people will retaliate right. or try to retaliate mm. 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 it's not strange no 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 in the retaliation you have your free or free, they <laughs> have your free, or free. Mm. what is expected of them now? if you if 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 somebody is endangered but again, remember you have your mask, so it's not going to affect you as such. But if somebody's in danger or somebody falls, then it will escalate. Mm. And mm. as and as a result of all of that, uh, again, I mean, Reed was, like I said, he's on site, but it, it is, and we had discussion with um with um Vincent, who was actually struck, as as he as he said. Um, yes. And after um Vincent was struck, the Dyer in, instructed their, their, their men to even to remove their masks because uh, Vincent was injured and the uh, other guys got um, were also injured in, in, mm -hmm. in the squad. Yeah. Um, but then um, mm -hmm. we get into the point, Cecil, of the of the, the Philip Timothy situation. Right. That's and and even before we get to that, um, Reed, uh, I don't know at what point in time we want to explain to the to the, to the um uh, the public, you're carrying point three zero three um um. Uh, no, I, I, was, I was carrying nine. Yeah, no, uh, yeah, but you as an officer, of course, you you carry nine. You uh, the, the, the 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 nine would be bigger. The Twenty. Yeah, the, the nine would be bigger. No, it's smaller, smaller caliber. Okay. No, I just wanted to make the listeners out there. Exactly, right? but the the twenty men that were in the in the riot squad, the twenty five men were in riot squad. Um, well, I it was more like it was more like twenty nine thirty. Uh, yeah, I, I have it somewhere. There. Anyway, I don't, I don't have them. I, I know, I know. It was about twenty nine thirty. Yeah, That's yeah. our standard. Yeah, okay, but but then. R Dyer would have been carrying what? A, 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 a pistol as well? Or, uh, yes. Uh, so Dyer would have been carrying a pistol and the other um, uh, men carrying three or three. Now, before we get into the actual shooting part and that who did what or whatever. Well, again, you again, the, 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 the riot box is so constructed yeah. that there would be some with um, rifles, with, with the three or three and a couple with the, with the SLRs. Yeah, but then again, I mean, I, so the, the listing of, of of the of the issue of of the weapons is also there as well. But the, but the point the point I was, I was trying to make was that if you the listing of the issue is there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, all all who all who issued um 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 uh, ammunition and rifles and stuff. Um, the but um read mm. in terms of of the three hundred three, just so we, we we put the the the, the weapon in, in perspective. Tell us a little bit about, we've been hearing this 303, 303, 303. What, explain to us what a 303 is, why it can do what you've seen it happen. Because you mentioned earlier about you wouldn't want anybody to be pointing a 303 at you. Why? Because of the kind of catastrophic damage it can cause. Tell us about that. Shock, one, and brutality, two. At close range, so and, and you would you would you would have uh, a, a three or three at 
a distance of 20 yards from an individual mm. and line up nine other people behind that first person at intervals of a yard. Mm -hmm. It will go through everybody. That is that is tissue or bone? Both. Okay. So we understand the the, 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 the muscle velocity. All right. So we understand that. That that has to be put into perspective. Mm. So you have 20, 25, well, let's say, let's say 20 of the, of, of the box carrying 303s. Um, they are being pelted with stones and, and all hell breaks loose. Tell us about that. Well, you persist with tear gas. Mm -hmm. Because tear gas is a known crowd dispersal agent. Mm -hmm. Especially in urban, urban situations. You feel free, it's not ideal for urban situations. Exactly. Exactly. The SMG, even shotguns. Exactly. You know what? Mm -hmm. Because you already want to disperse a crowd. Mm -hmm. So so it will be the last thing to do would be to use the free or free. So at what time did you all use the, the free or free then? When the I'm sure if that report is accurate, mm -hmm. it will show the riot squad taking control of government headquarters yard. Does it? Uh, no, it, it, didn't, it didn't go into um, taking care of... It, remember, the, the, it, it, it says, um, where is it now? Gasmen were ordered to uh, 1006. Um, and then it doesn't say anything after that. From the... Timeline. From the from the area outside the the um the Arawak house. Mm -hmm. Is there nothing more? No, it, it it doesn't say anything more after ten oh six because at at that point in time um the bullets and stones and stuff were being fired and before you know it and at, I it, I will see what time it says that Philip Timothy was shot. So and by that time, you were on the ground there as, at that point in time anyway. Uh, mm -hmm. Timothy, it doesn't say... No, but I, I just want to yeah, know, ahead, ahead, I, I, asked, I asked the critical question. At yeah. what time did your men, um, through at the people according to what um, some historians give it, um, the three of three? The three of three was never fired at anybody. On that day. Okay. So, so yeah. that, 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 is, that, is, that has to put in Well, that's what, that's, that's what I, I asked him to explain mm -hmm. the, the violence and the output of a 303 pointing at you. And let's say even, even from 200 yards, it's still, it's still deadly. And so if you, if you are within that kind of range, it is almost point blank range. Mm -hmm. So if you point a 303 at somewhere at that, at that, at that range. Um, and again, um, Reed, I have the copy of the autopsy report, and I will 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 go through that as well. Um, of of what uh, a bullet from a 303 hitting somebody, right? If it was being f fired by the, by the DDF, what kind of damage that person would have had? That's what. No, no, I, I I want to find out from you, um, Malcolm, because you said that the fuel was never sent at anyone mm -hmm. or at the crowd, but we, we would have seen about three to four holes on the. Um, treasury treasury building yes um is that of the yes the yes That's, yes okay why 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 well, well <laughs> the, the the um the crowd disposal it's it's a progressive exercise a progressive operation Tear gas, yes, but shock and awe, the sound of the weapons. You're not looking to see if somebody gets in shot, if you get in shot, but you hear the sound of the weapons. And so we fired deliberately, and that's the few guys who were in the yard with me. We fired deliberately at the wall, the treasury wall, because we could take the pressure. We fired a few, a few rounds there, and that was it. And, uh, and, uh, and as you can see, not many. And uh, just about three, four. No, no. In those shots that you would have fired, would that would those shots be able to rebound and get back to people or onto people? No, because because we were firing point blank. We were, not, we, were not, we were firing. There was no angle. No, there was no trajectory that would cause it to rebound to anybody. Okay. No, let me. To ricochet, you know. Okay. At what time 
did Philip Timothy in all of this situation actually occur? Philip Timothy, I was under the, um, the ministry on the northern end. So that is that would be just in front of the car park area where the underneath where the, the vehicles park underneath. And I heard a lady say, Bitch, you're pong. Last way you could watch La Jodia. And then I saw I turned to see what her attention was. And I saw a body in the drain that is just just below big edge financials. That's a new little co there. On the ground, twitching. Now, my training is, in situations like that, you go and retrieve the body because the protesters we learn from Northern Ireland have a habit of mutilating the bodies and blaming the security forces for it. So that was for part of my Irish training. That is when I called for troops to come with me to recover, and that is when we fired the bullets at the, at the church building. That is how they covered us. Oh, so you're saying that after Philip Timothy got shot, that's when you all... That's right. Okay, so it's not before, like some person would like to see. No, it's not before that. That's my that's my very accurate recollection. What 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 more is because the people? No, no, how far how far you were in reference to, um, and to hear that elderly lady making that statement. How far would you have been from close to her? We were, we were together more or less about five feet. No, what would have that elderly be um, doing in that area there? She was a party supporter. She was a Patrick John supporter. Uh huh. And 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 you said and there are people there are people among the crowd who when we when we took over the when we when we appeared on the scene that is me and my section dealing with the Hillsborough Street section of, of, of rioters that came identified themselves and remained the force for protection so that there were people taking protection as well. So that the crowd wasn't all adversarial. No, okay. there were very few, but there were there were there were some people who were there in support. Can you tell us in, in reference to location, um, because you're talking about underneath the ministerial building where you were, in terms of location, to the west or the east of the of the, of the building, or further or further west, closer to the financial center, that you would have heard the elderly lady making that statement. No man, it's not about financial center at all. It's more oh, the financial center, um, treasury building. Is the is the I was east of the treasury building. Mm -hmm. I wasn't in the parking lot. I was on top of the. I was on the ground, the basement of the of the ministry. The, you, you, you know where the, where the vehicles park. Mm -hmm. Okay, there's a little raised elevation there. Mm -hmm. That's where I was. Okay. No, let me just um, reference again. I wasn't there. I was elsewhere. Um, but what's written here, um, read, is quite interesting. It says, mm -hmm. there's a, and, that, and that was given on oath by, um, um, by the persons who reported to the commission. Mm -hmm. There's a gentleman, he says here that um, uh, Philip Timothy was seen in Hillsborough Street by Edward Robinson, who had gone there to take shelter from, the, from tear gas smoke. While standing in Hillsborough Street, opposite the Treasury Building, Edward Robinson heard bullets being fired and saw members of the Defense Force advancing down Hillsborough Street from the direction of Government Building. According to Edward Robinson, Defense Force, um, a policeman who was then off duty told him that he should keep his eye on the Defense Force because they were aiming in all directions. Where they were standing in the alleyway, he tried to take cover and realized that a young man who had been standing near to him had fallen to the ground as a result of a bullet wound in his stomach. I don't know how he knows his stomach. He did not know him, but he later learned that the name was Philip Timothy. Mm -hmm. 
At precisely the same time, Robinson received a bullet wound in his left hip. <laughs> now, we'll, let, we'll, we'll go through all the bullets there in a while. <laughs> Rob yeah. Robinson said that he, Robinson said that immediately before Timothy was shot, he was merely standing and looking on. Robinson and, a, and the off-duty policeman tried to get Timothy out of the way because he was then he was lying down. But the members of the defense force would not allow them to do so. They were swearing and ordered everybody to lie down. Robinson wow. was, however, able to stand, and as he did so, Timothy also tried to get up, and he was shot again. So wow. that's, two, that's twice. Yeah. By a member, now this time now, by a member of the defense force. I want to, I want to repeat that. Timothy was also tried to get up, and he was shot again by a member of the defense force. Stop here. Stop here. Read. Mm -hmm. What's your claim on that? There's nothing, there's nothing, that's just, I mean, that's, that's a movie, somebody writing a movie script. A movie script, right? Yeah. So you're saying, no. basically, sorry, I'm, yeah, no, I'm go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. So you're saying that that is not factual. That could not have happened because my, my, trained, my, my men are trained. But, 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 but Timothy never tried to get up, you know, bro. Mm. Because as soon as the lady exclaimed about him, my eyes were on him, I wanted to go back and go and, go and, go and get him out of where he was. Yeah. Did, you, did you go get him? Yes. And where did you bring him when you got him? We brought him to the ground floor of the of the um of the ministry of building. When 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 you got him, did he had one shot, two shots? I don't know. Hmm? When I, you got I, him, I, I was he know. alive? Was he dead? He was still alive. He was still alive when you got yeah. him. Yeah. Okay. So he died either upstairs or in the at the ministry at the, at the um at the hospital. I'm not sure. So 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 you took him and carried him from where he got not shot. Not me, my men. Yeah. Your men yeah. took him from where he got shot to the ministerial building yes because that was where our safe haven was mm -hmm. you know we ventured out under cover cover me we fired some bullets at the ministry at the min at the treasury building he ever spoke no he never spoke okay um well just just to, just to go along there i'm to just to um corroborate what reed is saying he had himself heard shots being fired after he had ordered sudden bliss to cover the prime minister because the, 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 the Prime Minister was coming, the question we asked early on, and um, he read had, had, had ordered Blair's, who was responsible for the Prime Minister detail, to, to, to take care of the Prime Minister. His first, his first thought was that, of, of, was that a member of the Defence Force had been shot, but realized that that was not the case when he observed a body opposite the Treasury Building on Hillsborough Street, about five yards away from the crowd of people. He decided that he should he should immediately recover the body, and so he shouted to, to Sergeant Blaze on an order to cover me, and directed that the body should be recovered and removed. The body was removed on a stretcher by the members of the riot platoon. In the process of recovering the body, Captain Reed said that he that he uh, fired 21 bullets from the from the pistol, which with with which he had been issued as an officer in the defense force leaving only five bullets in the magazine. I don't know how many. So, the, so the, but, but what you had, uh, uh, you had a, 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 a nine, nine millimeter um, bro, pistol, right? Bro, mm -hmm. the, bullet, the weapon I have doesn't hold that amount of bullets. <laughs> exactly. Okay? <laughs> At most, it would, people could force it to, to take 15. Right. I could not have said that I fired 21. Right. I didn't have a spear cartridge. And leaving five in the, in the magazine, you know? And leaving five in I don't know what, what, what it is these people try to do, but yes. it's easy to see yes. what the facts are. Now, when I say cover me, yes. cover me doesn't mean to shoot somebody. Right, right. right, right. Military, military terms. If you cover me means you fire bullets left, right, and center in the air everywhere. Mm. But then we had a particular area we fired them at the treasury building. Mm. Mm. You know, so how does a report say that I fired twenty-one bullets from what? The only weapon that we would have to 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 to, hunt, to fire twenty-one bullets would be the SMGs. Right, right. And the SMGs they're too dangerous. Although they are ideal for for urban warfare, but they're too dangerous. That is what kill that kill that kill that kill um um Inspector James. Yep, scary. Yep, it. Scary. It, yep. By, you understand? By by um by uh by, by the gun. By Radigan. Mm -hmm. So warn them and tell them that weapon not for the hills. That weapon is not good for anything. Mm -hmm. Because the bridge is open. Any piece of 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 of, of vine in the hills, it will set it off. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. So 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 I, I didn't have any weapon if that, that I didn't need all those things. I had men around me so you know to cover me and 
whatever else that that was. So that is that is inaccurate, you know, in a lot of ways. I mean, Timothy get two bullets, my brother. Yeah. No, 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 no. Here, you know, here the, the actual kicker now um, on the autopsy report because we we just established the how violent and deadly the, the, the 303 is, and the report of the of the um, the autopsy report um, is quite interesting. And let's see if I can find it. Um, where is it now? As right. you're finding it, I'm yeah, going to ask a question. Right. I'm going to ask a question to to Malcolm. Mm -hmm. Can you can you state to the public that? The death of Philip Timothy is not that of the different forces. Let me let me say this. My name is Malcolm Reed. My wife's name is Heather Reed. A young lady showed up at Heather Heather Reed's doorstep some time ago and told her, "Your husband didn't kill my brother." I know who killed my brother. That is the only part of the discussion I want to release. No, we didn't kill him. There was no need to kill anybody. We had the crowd under control. The crowd, the crowd was running. People were running for tear gas. People were running. What, what, what are you going to kill somebody for? And, and the reality, I'm read, if, if <laughs> the, 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 uh, the damage that a 303 could inflict one three or three and if you add one two three and you point that at more than whatever then it'll be a bloodbath but here is here the, here the autopsy report on the body of philip timothy and that was signed by william e green dmo um he was a doctor who did the report so he says at 2 35 p.m on the 30th may 1979 i performed an autopsy on the body of philip timothy a young man of about 19 years of age the body was, was first identified by Norman Cyril, a friend of the deceased, at 2.35 p.m. and again at 3 p.m. by Lucia Timothy, sister of the deceased. Now, here it is. Exam ex external examination. One inch by a half inch hole, about two inches above the superior anterior eye-like spine on the right side of the body. There were no powder burn marks around this hole. Now, just above the superior anterior eye like span, the left side of the body, really, we hear this, a very small puncture wound was discovered. You're talking about 303 you now? A very small puncture wound was discovered. It looked like the wound made by forcing a lead pencil into the skin. Yeah. There was a dark coloration around the small wound. So, read. Are we, are, we, are we talking 303 yet? No, we're not talking 303 yet. We're not talking 9mm, we're not talking 7.62. That is what we had on the day. We didn't have the little 32 that, that killed the man. That bullet was meant for somebody else, for one of us. So, so you, when you say it was meant for one of you all, any one of you all were close to Philip Timothy on the day that he, that he fell? The, no, man. No. So why would, it, why would you make that statement? Because, be, why, 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 why shoot him? And who, and who you and who you pointing the weapon? He could have shot the person. The, pers the person who shot him could have shot him for the the for the cause for the cause sake. No. To I mean, to blame to blame the defense forces. Well, again, you have a point. That's possible. It's it's it's, it's far fetched, but it's possible. You know, but 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 that bullet was meant for one of us. Yeah. And 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 to just to reiterate, read it it a uh, one. A uh, inch by a half enters the right side, and it, it exists. Uh, uh, the puncture wound is so small; it's as if it's forcing a lead pencil into the skin. Yeah, but then again, and look at the angle it, it, he was shot from. Right, but then he was shot from behind. Yeah, but but then but then no, I'm not read. But the, it is it is saying the the very report makes several references to Philip Timothy being shot by a member of the defense force. Using a three or three rifle as the only so, thing that he had. So, so you said that he was shot from behind, meaning, and he was in that coup. Yes, that's what you said. Yes, on. yeah. So he would have been shot from behind. He was at the front of the coup. Yeah, at the entrance. So he was at the entrance of yeah. the coup. Let me ask. <laughs> By any chance, would you have would you have seen people who purport to be politicians around no what about the trade union no 
So you, you did not see at that time any members. These people who wasn't there, bro. Their their lackeys and their minions were there. They wasn't there. Believe me. So you're saying to me that who was in the house of assembly was in the house of assembly. Uh -huh. Okay. But to say on the ground leading anything, nobody wasn't there leading nothing. So where would have been Zaboka? I don't know. A, 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 a union leader. I don't know. Where would have been Charles Savre, a union leader? But if they had got, if they had got taken, I would have would, would be anybody up to now. That is why I make the point about the dreads and so on and the criminal elements because we use our discretion. We use our discretion. We we, we recognize what's happening. We, we do crowd. We do mob psychology. We do crowd psychology. And we know that those crowds were just released there. They wasn't, they wasn't organized or nothing. Yes, the stones were collected because you can know stones that come out on the side and no stones that come out in Pong. You understand? I fire enough stone in my road for me to know that. So that, that, that amount of, 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 um, of, 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 of organization was there. But the crowd was just released. Okay, let's go to the telephone now. We're giving the, the public an opportunity to call in. Mm -hmm. We have the first mm -hmm. caller from overseas. Good evening to you, caller. Yes, good evening, Sergio. Good evening. Oh, I'm listening to I'll a up, lot please. of this. You can hear me, right? Yes, I'm hearing you. Yes, I said I'm listening to a lot of history, things that I did not even know about. Um, so, um... I um I want to make mention of the first session about the Rastafarian movement. And uh, for those of us who probably were too young to remember, what um, really caused the movement to take place? And also, another question is, where did all this ammunition come from? Were they not what the British um, brought with them when they enslaved our ancestors, you know, with such brutality and atrocity? That part is no, for sure. That part for sure is no. <laughs> it's no? That part for sure is no. It's no. It's not from the British. Yeah, no. but, but to, answer, to, answer, to answer your question now about the, about the dread stuff, it will be easier because there are several opinions as to how this whole dread thing. And so you can, if, you, if you do your research on the internet, you will see several opinions as to how the whole dread thing started and where it came from. It's yeah, but she's talking, she's talking Rastafarian, yeah. which is different from dreads. Well, yes, yeah. Some people have different uh, opinions. Well, some of yeah. us have different opinions about yeah, the Rasta and, and dreads. See, you yeah. know? Same, same difference. Some persons are saying that the dreads were in the bush and the Rastafari yeah. were more concrete co more, were more, were more religious <laughs> and they would be in the heights okay, well, but, yeah I'm talking about the, if you if you dread because i read dr um leonard honey church's book you know about the maroons in the forest right and listening to the discussion tonight it's likened to what happened to the maroons maybe the maroons was more of an extensive thing, but a part of it rem remind, reminds me of the Maroons, you know, who were really running away from the colonizers, and uh, that's why I said, who left us all this ammunition? I, I take because your point, except that, for example, you had the kidnapping of the young schoolgirls, the young ladies in Portsmouth, you had the killing of Bright, you have the killing of those white people. That's where, it, that's where the weapons came from? No, but I mean, we black people do never manufactured weapons in those times. Oh, I see what you mean. Okay. All right, yeah, all right. Uh, 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 let's, give other people, let, caller, let's give other people the opportunity to call her because some persons would like to call too. Yes, I know the time is yeah. coming to an end. Yeah. But um, I, was, uh, I just wanted to make mention of the... Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very much, caller. Thank you very much. Let's go back to the telephone. Good evening to you, caller. Your life. Hello. Yes. Good evening. Yeah. Good evening. This is uh, Earl Lawrence Sensei Dominica calling from Florida. Sensei, right? Good afternoon, Sensei. Sensei coming from Florida. Yeah. This program is very interesting. Uh, I just want to know who was the police commissioner at the time of the uh, May 29th. Uh, 
Joseph. It That's was Lo Lawrence Joseph? No, no. Uh, or Joseph Lawrence? Uh, what's his name now? No, the deputy the, the deputy oh, commissioner was Abraham Philip, Joseph. Philip, Philip, Abraham, was, uh, Abraham Joseph, acting commissioner. Yeah, Philip, but, but Philip, Philip, Philip was, was, was on vacation. He was on, was on vacation, yes. Yes. The so commissioner was on vacation. Yes. Yes. Oh, he, and Philip was the commissioner, but he was on vacation. So, what what was the role of the deputy commissioner? Was he supposed to control the police or something? That's correct. So, why didn't he give um, Mr. Reed some assistance? Mr. Mr. Joseph ought to have placed his two subordinate officers in close confinement. That is to say, he ought to have locked them up. <laughs> you understand? Would you consider that treason? Yeah. <laughs> and Malcolm, would you consider that treason? Thank you very uh, much, caller. I'd call it a, a, a serious breakdown of yeah. this yeah. being on standard. Good evening. Good evening. Yeah. Good evening. Uh, okay. Um, yes, yes? Uh, sorry about that. Um, yes, m um, you earlier on you made mention of, of a document that you have in your possession. Yes, um, so I, I mean, if, if we would we have exhausted the um May 29th right now because I have another um area except the Robinson person, what was what was his his, his um <laughs> his position if they haven't been shot by the defense force? <laughs> well, actually, actually, read uh, what's what's interesting that several person said they got shot and and if 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 the persons who got shot are all claiming to have been shot by the bullets of the defense force then it means that the injuries don't, do not match up to what you would you would you would expect if you were shot no. by by a no. 303 bullet so Granted. are you saying to are you saying then um um read that many people came with other intention yes i would say that do there is, is a sakitape you know <laughs> <laughs> you, you know what Sakitape is? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes. And let me just make a, a, a point here. Sometimes the entry wound for the for the um free of free is not is not quite large, eh? mm -hmm. It's the exit. Yeah, well exactly exactly. Either so, way. Either way. Just hold on, someone is on the telephone. Let's go to the telephone caller. Good evening to you, caller. Good evening, Cecil. Good evening to your family. Yeah, I just want to see. You're breaking up, caller. You're breaking up. Oh, I'm breaking up. I know why I'm breaking up. I'm telling the phone. Anyway, you have to bring back the phone. I'm sorry, caller. You have to call me back because you're breaking up. I just can't get your call. Um, we can't get you clearly, so you have to um call us back. Yes. Yeah. So in the number of persons who are claimed to have been shot, um, Philip Timothy, Algernon Filbert. Um, he says he was uh, where is it now? He was hit by a bullet in his in his left thigh. Edward Robinson received a, bu a, a bullet on his left hip. Um, Emmanuel Aylmer, um where was he shot now? Um, he says the bullet uh, entered under his left ear in the temporal area and passed under the left eye, destroying the orbital and left facial bones. <laughs> um, this one now, Margaret Etienne said she received shrapnel shrapnel is the the metal um fragments of the bullet that would uh, that lodge in, in her in her chest uh george nelson said he was shot as well robert jackson was shot matthias dover was shot uh vivian <coughs> rock so i mean all of these persons there um if they were to have received anything because most of them would have been at, at, at close let's, close blank, uh, point blank range really let's, let's go to the telephone quickly good evening to you caller Good evening, Cecil. Can you hear me better now? Yes, very, very much. Okay, good, good, good. I I was just saying it is good that you you resumed to that program. You know, I knew you had that program some time ago. Uh, it's nice to have this program back again. But, um, you know, it's it's very interesting that um, as as time goes by, whatever happened in the past, there's something called reconciliation and forgiveness. And I think all those things there is happening... What is going on right now with the discussion that you're having with these people based on the past things that happened, stories? I mean, there were a lot of atrocities. There was a lot of, I mean, hatred. But it's good that there can come a time of healing and reconciliation. So, therefore, but Cecil, I will not tell you, in my days, as a young boy growing up in Bells, and um, I heard uh, Mr. Malcolm said some certain things, yes, probably. I'm not 
really saying things that I that that I have a fact, but I remember the stories. I remember some of the things that happened as a twelve year, twelve, thirteen year old boy, and so on. But previously, um, Cecil, the dreads were not the dreads were not violent. The dreads were not violent. When the dreads started their their movements, they were more or less just getting out of Babylon and just. Mm-hmm. You know, chilling out in the woods mm-hmm. and so on. I remember the dreads, mal and Kelsey and all those people. They were just walking down, like you know, in 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 areas, you know, one after the other. Among the dreads, we see the dreads walking down with their with their skirt, their um their pie skirt on them and their stick like Moses. And they were just nice. They were, they had no weapon. They were not violent. But something happened. Um, Cecil, that that turn, that peaceful movement of the dreads, when it became violent, you know, and then they begin to get guns and this sort of thing. And I I think you know, um, if I recall, I think is. There was a, 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 a black power movement going on, try to come to and the, try to come to there were a lot of innocent people. Try, just, I it. myself had that to go back to a young boy just call following his call them, call you know, call and uh, nothing violent. Call her, try to but, come to the um, point. Call her, yeah. try to come to the so point. Because there are I don't want to take want to much of the time, but I have a few things to say quickly. Thank you. The Thank thing you. is that... Uh, uh, good evening to you, caller. Good evening, caller. Good evening to you, caller. Good evening, caller. I'm sorry. Um, yes, um, you were saying earlier on that... Um, let's see if we get a call again, quickly. Good evening, caller. Hi, uh, good evening. Good evening. Yes, um, great discussion. I can say for one, I love local history. And I've never accepted the fact that Defense Force killed Philip T. Murphy. The person who killed Philip Timothy, I'll hold back the name. I would not say anything on here. But I have one observation and one question. My observation, I can say that I've used a free free rifle in my life. I've fired quite a few rounds from it. And the damage that thing can do, it's amazing. Two, the question I have for Mr. Reed. Do you believe that Leroy, a.k.a. Pocosio, actually died in Dominica or he fled from Dominica and died overseas after a few years. I, I, I believe I believe he died in Guadeloupe. Yeah. Okay. So Pokusio actually died out of Dominica. Yeah yeah. Yeah. That's from all reports that's what I've heard. Pocusio. Yeah we know we know that. Yeah, you know. Um n- no no um Yeah um, Mark, um Yeah yes. read um, if we if we just quickly divert to uh, other areas, but before we do, let's take a word from our sponsor quickly, uh, um, sure. if you don't mind. Let's take a word from our sponsor, and um, we we'll come back right across to you. Max Right Trading got you covered for lumber, electrical, plumbing, and we have power to and all your household needs. Twenty three years in serving Dominica. Max Right Trading, your foundation to building success. Come see us at the Fun Colour Industrial Estate for all your building. Great customer service, convenient packet, delivery service, and best deals. Opening hours from 7.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. weekdays and 7.30 a.m. to 2 p.m. on Saturdays. Contact us on 449-9465 and order on WhatsApp on 225-8230. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Email marktroy at cwdom.dm. Marktroy Trading got you covered for lumber, electrical, plumbing, and we have power to and all your household needs. You should know this by now, DBS got the number one sounds, there is no other, oh no, not in this world. Yeah man, this is Glenn Washington, DBS at the bars, see? Yes, um, uh, yes, read, just, um, um, we have two areas that we need to, um, jump into, one of them, your, your, your name is, is listed in there. And the other one has to do with um, persons that you knew very well. Um, I have a document here, um, uh, volume number two, 1983 of the drum. And it's, it's, the headline is Death Sentence. 
um, and in there it makes reference, and I read what the it's a, uh, a judgment by Judge Saturn Singh, mm -hmm. and it's, it's, it reads, this, the sentence of the court upon you is that, and it doesn't just that you read, <laughs> mm -hmm. it makes reference to six other gentlemen, and I'll name their name names um, right now, actually, I will say, Fred Newton, Romain Roberts, Will W. John Phillip, Hilroy Garraway, Garner Willis and Jones Sampson. It reads, The sentence of the court upon you is that you be taken from this place to a lawful, a lawful prison and thence to a place of execution and that you there suffer death by hanging and that your bodies be afterwards buried within the precincts of the prison in which you shall have been confined before execution. And may the Lord have mercy on your soul. Mm -hmm. And that was Judge Singh, June 24th, 1983. Mm -hmm. Newton, Roberts, Philip, Garraway, Willis, and Joan Sampson. Um, there were also other persons who were involved in some way. And at Ronnie Roberts, for instance, mm -hmm. was um, declared not guilty. Um, you want to give, give us any, any comment? Because at the end of it, they read, I was, I'm quite concerned that of all the six persons who were who were sentenced to death, only Newton uh, ended up on the noose, mm -hmm. and nobody can explain to me w what happened to to commute the sentences of the others. Do you know anything about that? No, I I, I don't know anything about that. I was I was locked up in the prison myself when when the um, activity took place. There we go. So tell us how you found yourself being locked up. There we go. Okay. Now now I just want to say this with all my heart, that Fred Newton is the... In fact, he should have been buried in the cenotaph as far as I'm concerned. Fred Newton was the consummate soldier. He was the best trained man I've ever known. He was just a super soldier. And, you know, I, 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 I stayed in my, in my cell in the security block and I listened to a noise, the noise, blue, blue, blue. And I asked because, I, I mean, I was, I was under 24 hours confinement for three years. And they were told that they try any gallows to hang your friend. You know? We were that close, my, my, his clothes were in my mother's cupboard at home, closet at home. And... Uh, the, the sad part also is that the police officer who died was one of our best friends. He came to our headquarters. He was just one of our best friends. We, we shared many a joke and had many a drink together. But I, at the, when you talk about lawful prison, at one point in time, the government of Dominica, in fact, in fact I don't know if it's the government, but I know Barry Eugenia Charles, declared the police station a prison specifically to hold me patrick john and a couple others and i spent 18 months when people talking about the overnight in the police cell i spent 18 months in the in the in the police station as a prisoner that they declared it to be a jail i'm not asking for sympathy from anybody I'm just stating the facts. Now, we had a case, conspiracy. And we had a... Our counsel from Jamaica, Bertram Macaulay, who was really a Nigerian, and his wife, Margaret Macaulay, two QCs. And during the conduct of the case, the presiding judge, who was the local resident judge, he asked... Mr. Macaulay, what are you waiting for? At one point in the, in the hearing, Mr. Macaulay, what are you waiting for? In other words, move and look his submission because there really is nothing. And he moved the look his submission following afternoon, which was upheld by the judge. He instructed the jury, as he's supposed to do, to return a verdict of not guilty. And the foreman of the jury, who was a rabid friend, decided to counteract what the judge said. 
The judge had to threaten him with, with imprisonment. On the full account uh, attempt, when the judge asks, how do you find he says guilty, the judge said, he's not, not guilty, he's not guilty. And then we, we, we walked free on the, on the no case submission. What I understand followed after that was that the government had never had the authority to appeal on a nuke submission. See, but, but but for what? I mean, before we go to the read, let, let me just let me just lay out the the, 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 the what are you talking about? What case people are on and what are you talking about? So I, I have I have a copy of the of the uh, Eastern Caribbean Supreme Court um, uh, report. So, so just so you understand. No, before why, before before Richard, you continue. Yeah, we, you ask him the question. Let him let him just give the answer. Yeah. And so, then you can you can. But if yes. he has to explain yeah, what what no, case, what yeah, are we talking yeah, about? Yeah. What case? Um. It was it was the, the, the conspiracy case. It was the one for conspiracy to overthrow and so on. And so and so, so let me so let me let me let me. Oh, oh. Richard, let, let, hold on, Richard. Let, let, let him just finish this sentence and then you can yeah, come in. Yeah. Go, go ahead, go ahead. And the government went and gave themselves the power to appeal on an okay submission and made it retroactive to our case. Then they won the appeal. Then we got rearrested, retried, and sentenced to 12 years imprisonment. Yes, Richard. So, yeah, so it, the, the actual... Um, the case, the Eastern Caribbean Supreme Court, again, that's all on the internet as well, is it's, it's Julian David Malcolm Ritten Patrick John were the appellants versus the state, Eastern Caribbean Supreme Court. And it says, uh, the three appellants were tried together before judge and jury on a two-count indictment. The first count charged that they, they on diverse days between the 19th of September 1980 and the 29th day of April 1981, the Commonwealth of Dominica and elsewhere conspired together with Michael Perdue, Wolfgang Drudge, and other persons unknown to overthrow the, the lawfully constituted government of the Commonwealth of Dominica by force of arms. And on the second count, the appellants were found guilty on the first count. The first appellant was sentenced to five years hard labor, that's Julian David. Mm -hmm. While the second, second and third appellants were each sentenced to 12 years hard labor, uh, they appealed against the conviction of unsentenced. So that is the, the backdrop to what I'm really talking about. And Reed, you want to tell us about maybe your experience in the cells in that time, what you, what you, what you encountered? The, um, the, the. On, in, on, in the first instance, I spent three years in the security block. The, 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 the prison authorities felt it right to keep me um, in communicado. You, 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 were, you were that dangerous, Reed? I don't know. But three years in the security block, that is... Um, a nine by seven, nine by seven cell, and I would say, in all, I got out. I spent about to get up in the morning, go through, you know, throw out a slop pill, pick up some bread and cocoa tea, and go back in, and then go out at lunchtime, pick up your plate of food, and go back in. Chocolate any time? No. And then go out at six o'clock and pick up your supper and go back in. That was it. Every day. For three years, my friend. For three years. What were the conditions inside the cell? Sleeping and whatever. How how, how were you on the pant on the pant and concrete? On the pure concrete? Yeah. And I'm being told that every so often you guys would would have had a, a very, very strong shower. Um well, well, that happened to a set of guys. It didn't happen to me. Oh, did it happen to you? No. Oh, right. Well, you're lucky. But the, the, um, the, I mean, I remember one, I don't know what, what, what this cell had to inspect, what the inspection was about, but the, the chief of the, the, of the, of the 
prison and his deputy came to inspect the cell. I mean, in the cell there is nothing but a slop pill for me to excrete and a jug of water, plastic, and that's it, and me. So they came in, they walked around the cell, you know, point at the wall, point at the wall, shake their head and everything. And then one of them turned to me and asked me, who told you you could kill my mosquitoes? You understand? Well, the mosquitoes would suck my blood. When I make a blast, they, what stick on the wall, stick on the wall? <laughs> I mean, that's a joke. I mean, they, I mean what, 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 they were trying to humor you or what? what? I mean, come on. No. It wasn't humor. In, in reference to reconciliation, you are forgiven people? I have forgi- let me let me let me give you another story. So I'm in the security block, I'm in cell number six or whatever it is. And around midnight, one prison officer walks in to the security block after hours. He goes down the road, he opens a cell, he comes, he opens my cell. And tells me, take my things. I wonder what things, just a slop pill, a pig snout pill and a pill of water. And he moved me to another cell in the security block. When he was finished doing that, he told me that is where Trevor Bruni was killed. I put him in that cell to see what will happen to you. You heard about Trevi Bruni? We, we we had a discussion with um with um, um Rasman mm. um Alin. Okay. Tell, yeah, we had a, we had that that came up. Okay. Now it happens about six months later. He comes. The same officer comes around two in the morning and moves me to another cell. But that cell had felt the brunt of Hurricane David. And. If rain drizzled, I'd get wet inside of the cell. There's no way I could escape the, the drip, the dripping, dripping, dripping. And I remember my mother came up to see me this Saturday morning because he put me in on a Friday. She told me, well, the world there is that they put you in a cell to kill you. I told her, well, it just that it's a leaking cell and so on. But well, the partner left me there. Now, we're talking reconciliation, bro. This same officer who singled me out for his, well, he, he was a, a huge phenomite. He came to me one day and asked me to lend him my clothes that I had in the court. And he, he knew it by heart. A brown shirt jack, a brown long pants and a brown jigger boots. Because he had to go and stand for a child and he didn't have clothes to stand for the child, so can I lend him those clothes? Long story short, he brought me a piece of paper, I wrote a note to my mother, because when he went by her, my mother, she told him to send a note. He gave me paper and pen in the security block. I wrote the note for him, he got the clothes, he came and he showed me, a week or two later, his picture of he dressing me standing for a child. You hear me, bro? And not only is he, did he single me out for attention, he shot Benji on River Street, point blank River Free Free in cold blood. That was W O two Benjamin. So yes, reconciliation. Is alive and well in my soul. But we be, be, before we go um, that area, um, uh, I, I mentioned that Julian David, um, Julian David Malcolm and Patrick John. So right now you are the lone lone wolf standing, the last man yes. on there. 
Julian was sentenced to five years. Mm -hmm. Malcolm Reed, 12 years. Patrick John, 12 years. Patrick was, was reprieved on, ironically, on May 29th, 1990. That same date. That same date 1990. 1990. Now, what about you? Um, what what happened? You you were sentenced to 12. How, how long did you serve? Um, same um, same as Patrick. Oh, so you were also so, reprieved so, on, so on the same time? So your yes. anniversary is today, today? Yes. Wow, yes. Today. I didn't know that. Yeah. So, wow. So, 29th, 29th of May is really important for you. That's May right. 29th, 1990. Yeah. Part. So, you guys you, you guys served five years, right? That's right. About that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, which I did free in the security block. Solitary confinement for three years. But, but were you ever transferred up to, up to Stock Farm? Yes, man. That's what, but that's where the security block is. Oh, okay, okay. I was, mm. I was thinking about, about Dong. The 18 months I did in the police station was a different time altogether. Wow. Eugenia Charles de decided to, to name it a prison. No, no, I, I ask you the question whether reconciliation has taken place with you. You said it is well with your soul, but that's not answering my question. No, but, but again, who is there to reconcile with? Let me, let me see if I can put it to you this way. My greatest problem was Mr. Charles Savre. I have no difficulty with Charlo at all right now. No difficulty at all. Okay? Now, I look at the... I, I used to have a, a negative about the Henry Georges, the Ronan Davids, the, the Brian Allens, those people who could have done better. Who knew that what the junior Charles was doing. I mean, imagine Patrick John between jail sentences runs for St. Joseph, wins St. Joseph. And what does she say? I will not allow the world to hear the voice of Patrick John and, and, and prevented the bears from carrying House of Assembly. So, so, so that there was an aspect of abject wickedness and yet, what, what, what? Who, 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 are going, who are going to, uh, to have anything against? Well, do, do you think it's guilt that allow Dame Eugenia Charles in 1990 to, 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 to free you all? But she knew she didn't have a case. She just knew it was Patrick John. And she had nothing against Patrick, and that was it. The, the, the question you're asking, who, who, who? Um, the 1980, 1981 situation, um, you will have to determine for us or for yourself whether all what transpired um, and you were accused of by, guess who? It says on uh, number five, evidence was given. And again, some of the persons have gone to the great beyond. So I will read that it says, and that's the Supreme Court document. It says evidence was given by one Algernon Maffey. He had nine previous convictions, six of which involved the use of violence. Further, while in custody pending the hearing of a charge of murder against him, that was for the one for Eden Bellot. Mm -hmm. um, so while in custody pending the hearing of a charge of murder against him, he, he took leave of the prison. You hear that? He took leave of the prison yeah. when it was destroyed by Hurricane David mm -hmm. in August 1979. He was never retaken into custody. He gave evidence at the preliminary inquiry in that case in October 1991, 1981. And here it is. And the charge of murder was formally discontinued by the DPP on December 14, 1981. What's your, what's your take on that? Well, my, my take is, is, is the, 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 the council who represented us he we agreed on a position so i'm not going to relitigate or, or or make anything or, or say anything that'd be contrary to what we we our position our stated position that i was not guilty okay no no really when we had a little discussion on the on the on the mafi situation you you made a comment it says here mafi testified in december 1980 he went to the home of malcolm reed where he uh, where he read and another had a conversation about a plan to take the state of Dominica, to take over the state of Dominica. So you said, but here, but here am I, Malcolm Reed, highly trained officer, highly trained um, um, uh, soldier, 
and half is trying to and half is have a plan for me to tell me how to <laughs> tell us about that. <laughs> uh, well, again, my same my same position remains as I said a while ago. But um, well, some <laughs> some some areas of training. Yes. Will actually have you. Drop a, an exercise, not an operation, mm -hmm. as to how to take over your your own country. Okay. All right. Let me ask you: Did you did you by any chance? Um, I just want to repeat the question. Um, although you have answered, but I want to ask the question again: Did you by any chance try to overthrow a legitimate government? No. No. Um, so how did you get yourself entwined? with um the others i guess i guess guilty by association okay in reference to your friend um newton is it a fact that newton came to the prison to escape you from the prison well i don't know i am told that that is what was afoot but i remember that night in particular i heard i heard the telephone ring and then I heard some preparations. Then I heard gunshots. When you said preparation, what do you mean by preparation? You well, preparation. you know, you're accustomed to the area. You know, a particular lock, a cupboard get unlocked. You know where they keep their stuff. You know, so you hear it unlocked, and you see a little, a little, um, a little more urgency than at that hour of the morning. You no, know, usually them guys fast asleep. Mm -hmm. And then I heard the the the, the, the bullet ring. So, so while while you were in 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 prison, did yourself and Newton ever had conversation? No. So you mean you never saw but, him? But I but I've been three years in the security block. Three years in the security block. The same the same the same prison officer I told you about on my clothes. He, my church at the time used to send me fruits. And vegetables. And he would let it stand up outside there. I would see it every day I go out to bathe. I would see it. <laughs> and eventually he would tell me, okay, read for that, that your church has been not for you, for it. It's not good in making vinegar. But how could you forgive people like that? That's a different Christ mix in somebody's life. Because it really doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It really and truly doesn't matter. But read, but read all that information reference to Mike Purdue and all this guys. What are you? Are you? Are you categorically dismissing that or not? I will take the same position I took a while ago with my with my legal with my legal position. Okay, so okay, so and okay. that you know, yeah, because because Mike Purdue was somebody else's friend, not mine. <laughs> <laughs> he was somebody else's friend, not mine. How close were you with Patrick John? Patrick and John and I became close in the prison. What about Julian? Julian and I worked on Astor Fans together for about four years. So why would you then say that you got yourself in jail by association of association? Guilty by association. The association sometimes is assumed. Because here's the question you ask, how close were me and PJ? Mm -hmm. Everybody would, you know, PJ is Colonel and the Cove Defense Force and so on. I'm second in command would would assume a connection that really wasn't there. But but in the case of Julian, I mean, Julian was not military at all. He had no, I mean, just his just his. Just Th that his, is his, just his... just guilt by association. Wow. Poor Julian, I mean, poor fella. I mean, I mean, I felt for him in the jail, man. Yes, because you, he, knew you felt for him. Mm. I mean, he was crying. Mm. Yeah, he was a soft kind of guy. I mean. Julian, <laughs> I wouldn't, I wouldn't desecrate his memory. Yeah, yeah, well, but, uh -huh. how, how how long did he serve? He was sentenced to five. How long did he serve? I don't remember. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he was a soft, soft guy. No, no. What lessons do we have to learn today? Right. There these we go. Things? Yes, yes, yes. I hear people. Asking for a repeat of May 29th. They have no idea what they're asking for. Because I saw 
things following that devastation that was May 29th. Number one, I'll tell the police to get the act together and keep it together. Because we could still have retrieved the situation. But there was no command. There was no high command. Everybody was looking to protect their tails. For example, the people went down to the parish hall after the, on the night of May 29th. If a proper police force you would have gone in there arresting people and put on put some order in the put some manners on some people. But you saw people whose lives were destroyed. A man who was just a contractor built in my old school. His house was bombarded with stones, his, his daughters had to be under their bed. The hospital, you had patients administering medication to patients and patients discharging themselves really nearly. The oath that the police take is not to a person, but to an idea. An idea that is what Dominica is. And the constitution that sets out procedures, protocols, systems. I hear calls for resignation of government. It's every five years, and the police have to be ready to enforce that. Otherwise, I mean, the constitution was still early, it was still new, and some people got away with some stuff. But now it is for us to solidify. If we want a Dominica that makes all of us proud and to learn from May 29th that that is not how things are done. The idea that is Dominica that is, is greater, that is where we swear our allegiance to. The idea that is Dominica. Do you think political prisoners exist today? Yes, I do. Take Russia, for example. Take Guantanamo in Cuba. The Americans will call them terrorists, but they are, they are, they are political prisoners. But read, um, just... Uh, on 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 hindsight, in 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 hindsight, would you, if you had the opportunity to to revisit and relieve your days in the DDF um, and what you stood for, what you did, would you do it all over again? Perfectly. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's there's a quote there from George Santanaya. George Santanaya says, "Those who cannot remember the past are condemned to repeat it." I say it again. Those who cannot remember the past are condemned to repeat it. So, um, you 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 made mention about the about the about the uh, the police and what you think should be done and how we should go forward, because the the um, May 29th wasn't wasn't nice, and your experiences weren't nice as as well, um, and some of the persons who were involved with you have gone to the great beyond. So somehow. You end up being the, the, the Lone Ranger, last man standing, yeah. uh, Reed, and, and standing very strong as well. So, um, but we, we, we've had some of the, of the um, reports from the other persons. We're looking to get other reports because I think this dread um, period is not over. People are still looking for closure. And um, as far as you're concerned, Reed, the May 29th thing, is that, is that over for you? Is that, is that over? Yeah, it, it is over. It is over. The thing about it is, Dominica is a strange country in the, in the sense that is the, is, the, is the carnival fire over? Has there been closure? Mm. I would say no. Exactly. To, find, to try to find closure to the, to the dreads 
it's well now impossible. It's well now impossible. Because the, 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 the movers and shakers, the puppeteers, are insulated, properly insulated. And of course, as I mentioned earlier, most of, many of them have gone away by now. Yeah. Read a, a, a point that, that, that stands out for me very, very clearly. Even after all this May 29 situation, um, well, and the, the, the composition of the, of the Commission of Inquiry, people have their, their eyes and ears um, raised on, on the composition of the, of the inquiry itself. But the, the fact is that there was so much, uh, so many fingers pointing at the, the, the Defence Forces having done ABCDFG yet. Not one member of the defense force was ever charged no. at all no. for any of the of the of the injuries or the Philip of his death <coughs> and all that stuff. Not one member. Uh, uh, an inquiry like that, you go, you go to Jamaica or Guyana for that. Yeah, the and, GDF or the JDF. Right, and and then and then and when the DDF was then disbanded, I read there was. By the way, from a, from a, a point of compensation. None of the members of the DDF after they were disbanded were, were compensated. No. Was, was that not supposed to be that some level of compensation? Bro, what, bro. what happened? <laughs> I mean, nobody was compensated, period. Okay? I had done, what, 17 years, I think, now. Right. The, again, Eugenia Charles. Bro, you're familiar with the military all over the world. You familiar with the atrocities that some soldiers will do, will commit just in normal times, and how they are dealt with. You do not, you do not disband and send home 90 odd men because of the misdeeds of a few. You do not, you do or, not. Or, or maybe have different political um, persuasions. Well, yeah, I mean, I mean, you have, you have, you have, when they disbanded, as a matter of fact, there were people who didn't, who didn't like what she did. Joey Van der Poel wanted to have my position. Hmm. Yeah. So, you do not, you do not, as the fans do send, do, do close down their, their shop because 10 people rob their, their goods. The police, fellow charge with whatever, you do shut down the police force for that. People mess up, you deal with them. Would you advise special administration or any administration um, to reinstate uh, a different force? I would, but it wouldn't be accepted. I, I happen to know that at least two police commissioners in recent times have asked for that. It hasn't happened. But 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 as for that, in the light of where we are, to do what to strengthen to because at right now, what has what is happening, um, Reed, that we're seeing that the members of the police force um, gets outfitted in what you would normally have been doing from a, a defense force situation to to separate or to differentiate between the police and the military. And they also have the RSS. Yeah, exactly. Which is which is which is a strength for them. Exactly. But why you think would what the what uh, what uh, a police commissioner ask for the re reinstatement of, of a defense force? In I don't know. I, I don't know. He didn't. They didn't tell me. No, but, but from your own. Your, but okay. What what would you see to be the benefit or the, or the difference between then what you were doing and now, if it were to be um, um, uh, re re reinstituted? I still don't know. I still don't know. I still don't. I still. I mean, I, I'm not aware of what's happening in these times let, now. No, 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 no. The, the, the question I'm saying really is that now, on the looking back, and because you were there mm -hmm. and you are where you are right now as a civilian, mm -hmm. what I'm trying to say is that would you see the benefits? What would what would be the benefits or the negatives of having the, a, a the, force? The the force now mm -hmm. would have to be a type of hybrid. It will have to cater to the needs of the community. Mm -hmm. It will have to, you see, you see, and what happened to us too that caused us to run a fall of many people? Mm -hmm. The you see the teen soldiers you see on parade, mm -hmm. the nice parade thing, mm -hmm. on the, in the Winter Park. Mm -hmm. That is where they wanted us. Okay. Don't, don't don't become real soldiers, my friend. Just be there for our entertainment. Okay. Now you have situations where the, the, you have a, you want a force because for, take for example. Skills, Sk mm -hmm. skills training. Mm -hmm. 
up my street. Look at look at look at look at feeder roads. Mm-hmm. Look at look at the outbreak of Sigatoga. Mm-hmm. And we have nobody to go and spray. Mm-hmm. You put your soldiers out there mm-hmm. to spray. Mm-hmm. To build and maintain feeder roads. Mm-hmm. Music. Dominica don't have a, do, do, doesn't have an active steel band. <laughs> so many other things. Discipline. Ex- well, ask for that. Ask for that. And farming. Well. So that you train people in farming, you release them into a cooperative after they, they've served their, their, their force. And you assist. I mean, there are so many things, man. But that's what it said, you know, in, in, the, original, in the original edict of the, of the force. It says number three. To assist in the development of Dominica by productive means is right there. That's right. Let, let me ask you, um, Malcolm, why did you take so long before you could actually talk about May 29? Nobody <laughs> ask him. <laughs> well, well, Cecil, you happen to be a very lucky p- fellow, person, you know. But um, I figured the time the time was right to. Put things in a, in a kind of perspective. Everybody has said their piece. Everybody has said their piece. So now, let me just say a little thing. There's a lot of more I could talk about. I'll, I'll say a little thing and, you know, let people... So, what, so what do you make of the historians now who give their side of the story? Well, the historian, which, historic, which historian, which historian, which historian. We have a, 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 a Freedom Party fellow. And he's Lawrence Broman kind of thing. What what? Which other which other historian? Yeah. We have, we have seen documents. We have seen papers. Um, we have seen books. Um, books in reference to May twenty ninth. Um, when you when you hear the public speaks of May twenty ninth, I wonder what you stay in your mind. I wonder what you see. You know how quiet you stay. You stay in this in your shell. Because because I am I am the living history. I don't read books. I don't read anybody else's opinion because I am the living history. I lived it. So how often people like yourself, Marjel, and 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 Blaise would meet and even talk about? Uh, we hardly we hardly do that. We hardly do that. We hardly do that. Dyer and I would talk, but he's in England now, and well. I know that I'm happy that you actually came on DBS Radio to, to speak, um, to give your perspective of May 29. I, I know, uh, just going through my phone a while, um, each minute, that people are actually happy that you could come in and, and give your perspective because they feel that um, for too long, 43 years, you know, that we only would say just May 29. Nobody could really talk about what is May 29. Let's see what the caller has to say. That last caller. Good evening to you, caller. Yeah, good evening. Just some simple thing. Of thing. Not too long ago, a Calypsonian was asking for the complete Dominica story. I hope he's listening. Good night. Thank you. <laughs> I, 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 I like that. Um, I hope that, that, that Calypsonian really actually got the answer for that complete Dominica story. You know, and, and, and I've been hearing some people talking about May 29th and repeating over May 29th. And I'm happy that. Um, Reed could respond by saying to them they don't know what they're actually asking for. No, they don't know. You know? Mm-hmm. And um, so we are. Uh, we have a peaceful country. Um, oh, someone else wants to... Uh, just about to say bye-bye. Good evening to you, caller. Good evening, sir. Good evening. I am calling from Portsmouth. Yes, sir. The Gataya. I just called to salute Mr. Reed from his talk tonight. <clears throat> You can see this man is a real soldier. And uh, he was saying something about the, the police situation. For me, if there is a defense force to come back in Dominica, you have to have a whole recycling of the system in the police force. Because one Calypsonian wrote and said Dominica is a police state. <laughs> well, the majority of defense in Dominica is from the police, and security is from the police. But the security of the natives is segregative, slightly sort of racial. But we need to have a real recycling in the police system 
before we can have positive and genuine security in Dominica, the police is too biased. Not because sometimes control is laid in their hands that they should just forget what justice really is and do things personally. But if we have an amiable approach to the development of our country, I think the police should think differently. And probably if they were thinking differently on May 29, they would have collaborated with the Defense Force and things would have worked out better. My brother man, we need to check our police force. Mr. Reed, I salute you. I watch your feet. In the gallery. And the others. Let Gallo flow, man. Thank you. Justice is justice. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Malcolm, I know tomorrow morning, you know, people are going to maybe call your phone and maybe meet you. <laughs> they haven't got my numbers. Man. <laughs> well, they will maybe uh, meet you. Your Mahu, Mahu people will tell you um, how much they're very appreciative of what you said. And, and just when I'm about to say bye-bye, Malcolm, that's when everybody's calling. It. Okay, that person is hung, is hung up. And, but, and, but, but, and, and, but yes, so Cecil, yes, as, yes. as you are talking about Mahu and, and, and Reed, uh, Reed, you live in Maho right now. Yes, People, ma some persons may know or don't know. As we speak, Cecil, I've been, I've, I've been thinking about it and I've said so to a number of persons. 43 years ago, this incident happened, which means that there are people who were not even born today walking the streets of Mahu. That's right. That that walk past this this guy and have no idea who he's dealing with, have no. no idea what it is. But having said that, Reed, you as a resident of Maho, to what extent um, have you had any opportunity to have a chit chat or something or something to to um, just to bring up I mean, the topic? I, I keep myself. Way. I keep myself to myself. Yeah, mostly. But, but but yeah, but but I hear that. But the history is so critical of um, your experiences. I mean, if if you walk away like like PJ um, walked away, well, has not walked away, but he was called to Great Beyond. Um, Julian was called to Great Beyond. <laughs> Um, um, but you know, like guys like you have some kind of contribution. I think that not you don't owe it to anybody, but maybe it would help for some of us our thinking. What do you think? I I, I understand what you're saying. <laughs> it's just that it's just that people have different interests now. Okay. Okay. Let's go to the caller. Good evening to you, caller. Yeah, Sorry. caller. You have, to call, you have to call us back. I'm sorry about that. You have to call us back. I'm really sorry about that. You oh, hey. caller, you have to call us back. Okay. Yes. Uh, um, yeah. Read. You know, I, I'm happy that you are able and you were able to actually come in on a, on a beautiful day. May 29th. 29 of May 43. is important to you. For yes. Yes. All kind of way. Mm -hmm. yes. Good evening to you, caller. Good evening, caller. Yes. Hey, good night, Cecil. Yes. Hey, this is Ronnie. You know, born in Jamaica. Another man. Another man. Ah, <laughs> Ronnie Rastafari. Oh God. Hi, yeah. good. Um, okay. Uh, it's after midnight. It's been a long night, Mali. So I'm I'm, I'm finishing um, now. You're yeah. You look at your call. So, yeah, I realize I, I've been following the discussion. Let me yeah. thank Mali for his perspective and the particularly the historical perspective. So I am calling. I don't know if it's to give him some consolation, right? So I will go back to where he started. I just came from Accra. Wow. And Accra, Ghana. Wow, wow. Mm -hmm. Yes, I am. And I, <laughs> Mali, I want you to know, and I wanted to salute your family for the contribution that Bishop Bowers has made to this part of the world, right? One of the persons that I met on this trip was Mrs. Rawlings. I heard you talk about the the coup and the reconciliation, et cetera, et cetera, to the extent mm -hmm, that yeah. Rawlings came back and won uh, the democratic the democratic election That's after right. the coup, yeah. right? Yeah. And I just want you to know that uh, at least in the Catholic circles, we, and the Catholic Church has a huge influence in Ghana, that everybody knows about Dominica because of the contribution of your uncle. Yeah. Okay? So I want you to rest in the knowledge that, yes, you've contributed and you've made a contribution to, to Dominica in your line of work, but your family 
contribution is also made to that part of the world, Africa, our homeland, our our lineage. So I want you to rest in that knowledge that, yeah, through your uncle, your family has not, and you, your family has not only contributed nationally, but internationally. The work that Bishop Bowers has done in Africa, building churches, establishing an order of nuns and schools and so on, there's a legacy there. And the last thing I'll tell you, I don't know if you, if you'll get a chance to visit, but the last thing I'll tell you, um, in honor of this man, he's buried inside of the church. His grave is actually inside of the church on the left side of the altar. I saw I saw um, your your photo with with at the, at his graveside. My sister sent me a copy. <laughs> okay, sir. It was one of it was one of the actions that I had to take as part of my my pilgrimage to that to that to that homeland. Yeah. All right. Maybe maybe at some point we we, we can talk about the trip. Uh, Ronnie, well, Ronnie, but, Ronnie, okay. Ronnie, Ronnie. Before you go, where were you in on May seventy nine? Seventy nine. <laughs> Where were you, Ronnie? Where were you? Cecil, Where Cecil can tell you. Cecil can tell you where I was. I I showed up to school that morning, mm-hmm. and I I entered the gate, all dressed in my school uniform, and there's Brother Jermaine walking out, walking out of the gate with a placard that says, uh, "Save Democracy," right? <laughs> So, so you followed? Like so, a, like no, a no, soldier. No, 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 he didn't like, follow, no? We were brought. Like a, <laughs> yeah, like a soldier. Yes, I did. Yeah. Like a soldier. Yeah. I followed, brother, <laughs> down Virgin Lane. <laughs> <laughs> down Virgin Lane, left on Barford, straight down to the mini. Straight down to the ministry. I have my own May 29 story. Yeah, I, was, I, I, was right yeah. I was right there, you know, I was yeah. right there. So, I mean, it's, a, it's an important, historically, there are, there are lots of lessons yeah. that we have to learn about May 29th. Huh? And I kind of agreeing with Mali that, you know, we, we have to be very careful um about what what it is that we're asking for and we have to we really have to think very seriously and find ways to solve our issues in all sectors of the of the country enough said good night gentlemen right, thank, you. thank you thank you okay, man. Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, man. We'll so mali your last words um it's already quarter yeah minute, nothing right? nothing more to add i'm available to anybody who wants to speak with me but apart from that i'm I'm happy to go back and go back to Maho and relax myself, man. Uh, I'm so happy to hear you say that, Mali. Um, I'm sure that there might be um, history teachers who might come to you to speak to your fifth formers. Exactly. Um, there might be other. other Actually, I was called some time ago to the um, what do you call it, the community high school to um, to speak to to some some classes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And maybe some organization, maybe even Yui. Uh, because we might want to document those things, you know, University of the West Indies. Yeah, it depends. Might want to document those things, and they, who knows? I may just call you in to have a, 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 some kind. Well, of they can just look at the documents, Richard. Richard Rich, Rich has. I mean, no, the major can. has uh, all the documents. No, that's, that's <laughs> fine. But but to hear it from the horse's mouth, it's 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 more practical, you know. Yeah, I mean, any any document that that puts me at fire in twenty one rounds from a from a, a weapon that holds thirteen rounds is just. So that's what I'm saying. So it's not possible that, it's that that they that they should take the information from that particular information. The, mili- the military like, person on that on yeah. that uh, on that committee must have asked well what, what's happening here. <laughs> well, but you see, but Mali, my take on on the document, um, even from the first time it, it it was discussed, is you have you have a complete report. So you can either take all of it, none of it, or because you if you if you if you t- begin to, to dissect and say you take that part and leave that part, or the document itself becomes useless completely. Yeah, you can, you, you can, you can, you can. I yeah. mean, come on, it's yeah. all, it's all or nothing. Yeah. Okay, Richo, your last words. Yeah, well, I mean, well, I mean, I mean, Mali and I go, we go way back in time from a, so we 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 can talk our, our, our military jargon and we comfortable um in the days of, of Radigan and, and all that stuff, as cadets and all that kind of stuff. Um, and we were always thinking about about Reed. We've always wanted to have a discussion with Reed with all our um dread stuff and. Rasta stuff that still has to be explored. It's not finished. As you know, Cecil will be looking for one of the other main main players 
in, 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 in the game that we may still be able to pull up and the public will be will be again listening with with uh, with, with, with bated breath. So comrade, um, nice that you were able to accept the invitation and I think we did we did wonderful. Um, I hope I did we didn't step on anybody's toes and um, you still mentioned that you have some classified stuff that is Cecil wants you to do declassify but it, <laughs> <laughs> No, <laughs> it's not, not going to happen. No, no so, luck, <laughs> so, comrade, rest. Um, go home and, and rest. And, and uh, I think we 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 did justice. I think the public will will judge that. And let's see how we can build this country. Mm -hmm. And I just want to say thank you very much, uh, Malcolm. Um, for You're welcome. To our airwaves and to actually help to have people having a better clarification as to what ac actually happened on May 29. And um, I'm sure that uh, people are going to have a different perspective and uh, have much more information now to really help in their thesis as they go along um, creating and carving that Dominica history. Uh, once again, I want to say thank you very much, Malcolm, for coming. <coughs> and I guarantee you that this discussion here will not end here. Um, it will have to be continued until other people are actually satisfied that we have a full story, a full circle of May 29. Once again, I thank you so very much. Okay, well, thank you. And uh, you want to thank the Honorable Prime Minister as well, you know for what? Mm -hmm. Let me just give thanks to you guys because I'm here speaking tonight. <laughs> I All like right. you said that, yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right, God bless you, man. Yes. All right, come on. Oxtrite Trading got you covered for lumber electrical plumbing. And we have power to all your household needs. 23 years in serving Dominica. Max Trading, your foundation to building success. Come see us at the Fun Collet Industrial.